What's up, everyone? This episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by StockX. StockX is the world's first online stock market of things for high-demand consumer products, including sneakers, watches, and handbags. StockX connects buyers and sellers using the same methodology as the world's stock markets, an anonymous live bid-ask market. All products are physically authenticated by StockX, allowing participants to focus on the transparency of data available, including real-time market pricing. That means no stressing about shady buyers and sellers, no lengthy descriptions, and no blurry pictures to decipher. All watches are in excellent or better condition. All you have to worry about is finding the watch you want and placing a bid you feel comfortable with. Stay tuned because later today on my Instagram, I will be giving out the uh, the prize by StockX of an Autodromo Group B Evolutione watch. Uh, it's a really neat uh, kind of automotive inspired watch that is actually sold out. This is pretty much the last place to get it. Head over to my Instagram right now to get in on that before it closes or visit StockX.com slash smoking to check out StockX today. We are also brought to you by Continental Belts and Hoses. Listen, belts aren't really something you think about in your car. Hoses aren't really something you think about in your car. But these things rot, they dry out, they crack, and when they do, they can cause really big problems. Continental Belts and Hoses are OE in tens of millions of Chrysler, Dodge, Ford and GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. They're also original equipment on the majority of BMWs and Volkswagens. Now, Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE pedigree. It's their OE technology series. Belts that are fanatically engineered for perfect fit, form, and function, and Continental has an OE technology series multi-V belt for 98% of the vehicles on the road in the U.S. and Canada. Hey, you get enough surprises working on cars and trucks, a belt shouldn't be one of them. Go with the Continental OE Technology Series Multi-V Belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. To get the full story, visit oetechnologyseries.com. Okay, on this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast, I have wanted to get Sean Morris on the show for some time. Uh, He is one of the world's foremost experts on the Nissan Skyline. He has a ton of experience uh, shipping cars around the world, importing and exporting. Um, The Skyline is still his bread and butter, but we're going to go have have an interesting in-depth conversation about all different kinds of imported and importable vehicles. Uh, It's a really good episode of this show, and we also get some of the backstory on the Motor X and Skylines being seized scandal. We get the truth behind that. Sean Morris on the Smoke and Tire podcast. And uh, three, two, one, go. Show. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Smoking Tire podcast on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. It actually is a fucking beautiful it Wednesday afternoon. It is really nice outside. Oh, yeah. my God. This is why we live in L.A. Sean Morris <laughs> in the house. Yes, sir. Top rank international vehicle importers. Yes. The legendary Skyline salesman. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I was saying. I'm like, I try to get away from the sales side of it. Like, oh, yeah. You know, that's... Well, I'm sorry for fucking up your intro. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I mean, I still you know, I do the marketing sales side of it a little bit, but yeah. not a lot. I mostly, you know, I'm more on the technical side of uh-huh. it and, and a little bit more on the marketing side now. Oh, so, okay. Well, that's good. So, um, well, let's I, introduce you. Get follow, uh, follow Sean. Oh my God. That's the, me, ins- yeah. the Instagram is going to be tough. I'll pull it over up on the oh, screen. It's man. Top rank <laughs> underscore <laughs> IVI underscore Sean underscore <laughs> Morris. Sorry. That's well, see, you that's, fucked up. That's impossible. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, that's that's just me because uh, you know we have another one. It's uh, like top rank importers. Oh, to- here's yeah, yeah top yeah. rank importers. Yeah, as well. that's I'll that's that actually well. that's the that's that's the better one. That's okay, the sales. Cool. My, I mean, mine is just like me and like some of the you know shit that I do. So, I mean, if you look at this, this is you know the other guys ones is a, a lot more like cars, car centric. You know, all yours of that. has like your kids in it and shit. 
<laughs> uh, no, like more technical. Oh, I mean, okay. if you go if you go back and have a quick look at it, you'll see like it's more like you know car parts and bullshit and a little ah. bit of humor. But if I can, but uh, you know, like here, what's that? that? And you're like, you're like, I don't know what the fuck that is. That's, that that is heated mirrors, heated cold, mirrors in a cold weather package in an R32. So oh, it's just cool. so it's just like some like mostly like a little bit weird mm. off the wall wacky. I like that. I've I'm got, gonna follow both. Um, look at this Rambo Lambos. Yeah, you, you know we were in uh, Monterey for. Oh. Car week, yes. and you know we're staying at the the lovely nights in there. You know, five hundred dollars a night for fucking nights <laughs> for like in. a forty dollar. <laughs> yeah, hotel. yeah. And so you know, when when I woke up in the morning, we were talking about these before, and and uh, I woke up in the morning, and I'm like, oh shit, there's two LMO double O twos, yeah. and there's. Because uh, I was looking this up not long ago, it was like 350 of them made. They didn't make very many at 350 all. 350 yeah. from total, total. From total. Yeah. And I was like, "Holy shit, there's two right there." So the um, the uh, I got a friend who's got one of them, and it's he says it's just you know it drives like garbage. Obviously, well, it, yeah. The I shifter's mean, like nine mm-hmm. feet to your right, but um, the big thing with these is the tires. So right, Pirelli right, apparently right. stamps a set of these out like right. once a decade. <laughs> right. And whether you driven they're, the car or not, you got to buy them, and they're like they're, ten grand. They're they're there are some really oddball like three forty five. It's a three forty five sixty five fifteen or some yeah, shit. Yeah, some like, some wacky thing. So tire. there's the the Delica that we drove up to monterey oh actually. is that so, your delica so uh, this r thirty. i um yeah so we, we took the you know i mean we we're tell me everything us. about the delica because this is the new hot shit in la i see surfers with these all the time now yeah you probably you probably have seen yasko maybe the with, same one maybe yasko let's like say my business partner maybe with with that because he's he takes it out surfing um does he come so, to venice he probably parks by my house if he surfs know, in maybe venice. so um but they're diesel four-wheel drive you know, not real fast or anything like that, but, um, you know, they're just kind of a, you know, I mean, a diesel four-wheel drive van and a small That's van. That's nice. And, you know... They're the right size. They're not, like, gigantic. And, and we, I mean, we had all oh, the rear seats. and So it has actually three rows, and but the rear seats, like, with the rear seats slid all the way back yeah. and then just driving up to Monterey with the with the four of us, it was Oh, so rear seats back and center seats out. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the other way around. No, oh, the, the center, row. center seat's back and the and the rear seat folded up. So oh, that way then yeah. we have all our shit in and the back. And it's comfortable for four? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Like you could, I mean, you know, you could fit a, a lot more shit than we had in there. So. How, um, how much power do these things make? Fuck. I don't know. Like, idea. is it less than 100? <laughs> it will go. <laughs> will it go 70? Yes, it will go 70 on flat, on flat ground. I going downhill. I probably have the record for a Delica, which is about what was a hundred and a hundred and forty k. Okay, so that's like eighty five. Yeah, yeah. And that, was, scary that was that was about that was about all of it. Super but scary. It, driving driving seventy is fine. But going up hills and stuff is a little, you know. Not. I really like it as like a city runabout. It's good. Vehicle. They're they're good. And then yeah. you know we have. Are some, they reliable? I mean, they're diesel. Can they're, you find parts for them and shit? I don't, I don't know. No, <laughs> they don't really break. I don't really break, as far as I know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I had but, a go recently in a in a, one of those Honda City, like a little K yeah, van. Yeah, we have we have a uh, Actis. It was so, oh yeah, yeah Acti, yeah, a couple Actis. It was it was actually kind of nice. I mean, yeah, for like a tiny little thing. The, cool. the thing that I like about like those little so we have a we have a Samba and here's a, your. So, in, I'll pull right. up your inventory. Your inventory yeah. is importavehicle.com. I poke around your website. Yeah. A lot more often than I talk to you. Okay, so I just I love seeing what. Oh, here's the Acti. So, so the one of the cool parts about the Acti, right? So it's double slider. So something this small, and it's got a slider on each side. It's Rad. like it, it's, it's like you know you could you can use it for. I mean, obviously, you know, thirty two thousand miles, and it's eight thousand dollars. Yeah, God, yeah. your money goes a long way in one of these, doesn't it? Right. So, and I mean, six hundred sixty cc. You know, they're you know again, they're not. No, fast. it's for the so city though. Right. Yeah. Is, but, look but, at that pad. Look at that little pad there. How? So, Thoughtful m- mid engine too. How thoughtful the engine is it is, that the right if corner? You keep, oh, keep, yeah. keep, you keep looking down the here, you'll see the engine is underneath there. It's so underneath the back. That, that's where the engine is. Oh my is. god. So. It's underneath like where the middle row is. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah so does this have does this have a middle row or is this a cargo I, van? It's just, it's got it's the seat the seat oh right here go. fold up. Yeah, no, yeah. No no seat belt there. But you know. When somebody really? asked me that, I was like I, I looked at it like uh ah, no seat belt. So I, I do this event every year called uh, Grid Life. Oh, there, there and they the use so, they use Acties as um as like pit vehicles right. for, well, at Road Atlanta. Um fast and furious on fast and furious tokyo drift we they used them you know they loaded them up with all the toolboxes and because of the double sliders and stuff yeah. you know i mean you could put you know big nitrogen 
tanks and all the other shit in there and, and get around and you can drive them everywhere. And some of them are four wheel drive. And dude, this you know, thing is kind of so, so then practical. N- n- now look at the Samba. So to go back to inventory yeah. and look at the Suzuki Samba, which Where's is, uh, I'm not sorry, not the Suzuki, uh, Super. Uh, you have to go back to the full inventory. So inventory, just go current inventory. Current inventory. So go down, down, down. You got a so this bunch one. of shit. So the Samba. Subaru Samba. So it's kind of the same thing as the Acti. Right. Small ex- K-Van. Right. So this one is rear engine, four-cylinder, supercharged. It's CVT. Which supercharged? It's supercharged, and the engine is behind the rear bumper. Oh, my God. So this... Is ex- it also a, six, a 600 or a 660 660, CC? yeah. But so if you look down, if you look a few through some of the other photos, you'll see, hopefully there's one. Oh, yeah, here Here's it is. Here's the engine. Right. So the, Holy shit. Look at that. <laughs> I, I mean... All compacted into this tiny little space behind the rear bumper, and so then the crazy part, like the radiator cap, is up, up here. Uh, what? Up, up like above up on the up ab- in the door jam. Oh, there you go. Oh, See, here's the radio right. cap above the tail light in the door jam. How about that? I mean, it's just like weird shit. You know, I mean, there's all these like Bro, weird this thing cars. Is fucking rad. When I build my when I built finish my collector car storage <laughs> facility, <laughs> right? I am a hundred percent buying one of these as a shop car. Mm-hmm. Why would I? Why would you ever want anything bigger than this? I mean, they're. I mean, you can drive them on the sidewalk. I can mean, I not, register this in California? Yeah, it okay, costs, costs money. But yeah. do you have to? You have to carb it. Yeah. Is it? Is it the full ten Gs or is it no, because it's a four. tiny little thing? Four, four Gs. Yeah. I mean, thirty thirty eight fifty. The lab charges the last time for small shit. So like uh-huh. cappuccino. That's a that's a pretty rad looking little cappuccino, dude. Yeah. You guys, I, we're gonna sit. Is this whole show just gonna be us talk, talking about inventory? I mean, it's <laughs> I mean, fine. Like, right. here's the thing about <clears throat> Japanese cars and right. the kind of shit you sell. If you're willing to sit on the other side of the car, your money goes so far, right? And, and but there's also a lot of like cool stuff that just we never had. Yeah. You know, I mean that that you know people always talk about. Well, the grass is greener on the other side, right? So totally. there's you know, so in other parts of the world, they look here, they look at the Mustangs, they look at Camaros, they look at the other things. Yeah, that I we love had. going to Germany and seeing and they, Z06s, right? Something or they, uh, Cadillacs <laughs> and and you know stuff over there in All right, What's the weird? What? Here's one for you. Let me okay. throw this at you. All right. What is? Because you get around the world. Yes. What is the shittiest American car you've ever seen that someone spent the time and well, money to bring to a foreign country? Well, let's let's talk about Toyota selling the Cavalier in Japan as a as a Toyota. I'm sorry. The, excuse me. The Chevrolet Cavalier? No, a Toyota Cavalier. What's a Toyota Cavalier? Yeah, that's a yeah, it's a Chevy Cavalier, but it's Toyota. Wait, that's what I was saying. Right. So it's a yeah, Toyota Cavalier. Oh my God! Are you fucking kidding me? This no. is real? No, it's real. Oh my God! They really did. They really sold the Cavalier in the worst American car right. ever I mean, made. Yeah, this is like How, a, and and with the standard American powertrain and all this garbage. Uh huh. And, and anybody and, and, buy this? Look and so there's ad. and so there's like a TRD kit for a this car. concept from the country that knows all about <laughs> driving pleasure. I've never oh, seen that ad, but okay. my <laughs> God, wait, we need to zoom in. I need to read this. Okay, it's arrived. An American package based on a new concept, sedan and coupe. A car is both a daily necessity and a partner for life and leisure. America has developed an attractive, quote, automotive (laughs) culture during its historical experience with the automobile. Toyota wants to let more people know about these unique values. What a fucking joke. So so there's a (laughs) so, so there's a TRD kit. And and so there's guys ah, there, there, there's guys in the U.S. that I've had asked before like can you get me a wow. TRD kit for my Cavalier and I'm you know I don't, can I don't you wanna, I mean I don't want to deal with that shit but, you know <laughs> have you ever seen one like on eBay or something uh, like I said people ask dude I that's know, I just, hilarious I don't want to deal with it you so. win I mean I was about to right. tell you about the time I went to Monaco yeah. and saw like one of those late '80s front wheel drive Cadillacs with yeah. the tuned port injection right, yeah. that someone brought over yeah. you know on like a C3 cor- or a, like a like an early '80s shitbox I mean, Corvette but, I've seen see, over there. see I I mean you know my my family we export like lots of cars all over mm. the world and stuff and over the years and I mean I've shipped some shit man I've <laughs> yeah. I mean because I used to buy you know so somebody would buy a car off of eBay or buy a car off a of Craigslist or yeah. some shit like that and I would help facilitate the movement of the car to to um to Australia mm. And man, I mean, some of the stuff that would show up, man, I was like, <laughs> you know, I mean, fucking no floors in the Camaro or something. I'm like, holy shit, man. I yeah. mean, but they, uh, you know, that was the thing is that because they never got Camaros, they never got Mustangs, they never got a lot of those cars, they wanted them. Yeah. And so, especially when, uh, you know, we had the recession here in 2008 and all that and the Australian dollar. So 
historically speaking, Australian money is about uh, 70 cents to a U.S. dollar. Mm-hmm. So they takes, it takes them 30% more of their money to buy something that's, you know, a dollar here. So, right. so if a $10,000 car in their kind of money, their idea costs them 13 grand. Right. So now it went to over one to one, which means now their $10,000 buys $10,000 worth of car. And it, and so we were selling a lot of stuff. And, um, how is it, if you're in Australia, is it easy to bring things in? Do they really No, care? actually, no, no, it's actually a little difficult. Yeah. They have some, some, um, some different, uh, what was called then raw Roar, roars, which uh-huh. is, uh, um, like workshop, uh, workshop stuff, and and we shipped a lot of um, caravans and other other things down there. And the caravans, we had to convert like the door, really put the door on the other side, and oh my and, god, and what a tail lights and all kinds of other shit. But um, cars, uh, um, the the the, the it, it is difficult. And and now the thing is that's changed is because they were protecting their market a bit, there's no uh, but but now there's no um uh Holden and there's yeah. no Ford like full local. size, yeah. They don't no, there's no manufacturing. There's no there manufacturing anymore. Yeah, yeah. there anymore. And so they've kind of changed some of what's going on. I, I I haven't been paying too much attention to what is, but I you know it's gonna open that market up a little bit to they're gonna have to, right? They just right. don't but have that it, much I mean, it's, stuff. Yeah, I mean it's small though. I mean there's only twenty five million people, twenty seven yeah. million people there. So when I was in uh New Zealand, you know, obviously different country, but same part of the world, New Zealand seemed to be um pretty liberal about what you could bring there as long as it was right-hand drive? Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm actually New Zealander. Are you? Yeah, I was Were you born, born there? I was born in Christchurch, yeah. Oh, really? so, so, and my, so my family originally, originally we came here to the U.S. to bring cars to New Zealand. Because, Back to New Zealand. Because then the rules were very different then about importing cars. And they so, said now they will only import a left hand drive car if it is special. Special. Car. It's a special. Like I love yeah, that. Special, like, they won't yeah. bring in a Mustang, but they'll bring in a Shelby, or they'll bring in a Viper, a Viper, or, or a Lamborghini, or yeah, something, or maybe some like a Z06 or yeah. a ZR1 or but something. But no, like no that. normal cars, only special. Yeah, but you know, cars. to Australia, like um, uh, it was uh, uh, left hand drive had to be over. I want to say it's the same, almost over twenty five years, unless you're in Northern Territory. And it was like twenty or something. And, you know, there's like different rules and regulations yeah, and yeah. shit. But you know, I like I don't stay on top of those if I'm not directly involved with yeah. it. Yeah, did that you know, business? There's only uh, so much room in my head for fucking, believe me for, for all those know. regulations and stuff. So, um, did that business happen? The news they're sending cars to New Zealand. Uh, us or uh, yeah, your family did that when you, they came oh, here like, to do that. Is well, that what they ended up doing? Uh, well, no, we ended up selling cars here. Mm-hmm. You know, my family business car sales, and then we actually eighty nine around eighty nine we started to export a lot of cars to to um to Japan. Oh. and so eighty nine we had cars that they were interested in, and so then we um uh, shipped quite a bit of stuff then, and then it got kind of crazier and crazier with the bubble. So um. I don't know why these people are here. Don't Somebody sent you money? Uh, yeah, well... Somebody the, gave you five bucks? Well, there's a feature oh. called Super Chat, and if those of you listening live, yeah, if you want to ask you want to ask us questions during the show, which we'll get to in the second half of the show, you hit us up in the Super Chat. Oh, man, they give it's you money. It's a good... They do, yeah. And it's a good... It's right. not a lot of money, but it's a good right. filter. Yeah. Right, okay. You know, it's like... Because this... That comments thing, like, it just goes... Right, like, right, there's right. just no yeah, way we yeah. get around it. But, right, but yeah, the Super right. Chat, it, it allows you to separate it out a little bit. Yes, um, okay. Sorry. Let's Please. talk about what people are buying right now. So 25 years ago is going to be mid-93. 93. What's, what's hot? R32, R32 GTRs. Is that still the bread still, and butter is the Skyline? Still. I mean, I'm almost, I'm almost out of what I have right now. I mean, How many sold- Skylines do you think you've legally imported I mean, a few hundred. Yeah, yeah, a bunch. Yeah, that's a bunch. And they, so, they and made I mean, by lots far of the most R thirty twos, right? Uh, GTR, GTR, forty three thousand, almost forty four thousand R thirty two GTR. And then the other Skylines, the other mm-hmm. you know different versions and stuff of them. There's about three hundred thousand, so quite a lot. A lot. And yeah. Then and so, what about R thirty three GTRs and then thirty four GTRs? Uh, Sixteen thousand and uh, eleven thousand. Wow. Really, really took a big. A big how, why, right. why such a huge drop? Economy, the, really? Yeah, that's it. So, yeah. what happened in '95? Yeah, that really. J- Japan's economy was shit. Just tanked. Huh? Shit. Yeah, I mean that's what I was saying about you know exporting and all that stuff. I mean we are exporting '89 till yeah probably up till '95. We, we were pretty 
pretty freaking busy. We're ex- doing Astro vans and exporting them overseas. Um, so crazy that someone wants an Astro van overseas. In hindsight, man, we, you know. we sold so many. It's not even funny. I mean, we used to do uh, like a hundred vans a month. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, for like a small family run business, That's you know, a we're, lot. At, we were out in, uh, um, uh, you know, Ontario area out, out there and we we're doing like, like I said, a hundred vans a month. I mean, we had like 80 vans. employees. We had like four paint booths. We had like full, you know, we we're doing all this crazy shit. Cause you're moving the doors to the other sides and stuff, right? No, no, we didn't have to do that. We we're doing, um, uh, we we're doing like, uh, conversions, like raised roof. Oh Ash- yeah. Astro van. So, and putting windows and, and you know, all, all we're doing leather interior, like full the coach flat building seats. kind of stuff. Stuff, full yeah. flat seats and all this shit. So cool. Um, you know, doing wood interior and you know TV, you know little yeah, CRT bullshit TV. TV yeah, you know, <laughs> and we're doing um, you know some some lowered ones and some other things. But uh, you know, when I was uh, it was fun when I when I was sixteen. So say like nineteen ninety, I went to Japan the first time in ninety one with my dad, and uh, that was when you know, I said I was about sixteen, and we were. Um, uh, you know, exporting exotics to Japan. Okay. And so that's when I first saw R32. That's when I started to really get into that car because, you know, they had all like the best motoring. Oh, hell yeah. VHS. And, and so, you know, R32 GTR out on track and, Just you know, smoking gets, fools. everything, you know, yeah. I mean, 10 laps of Fuji and it would be like, you know, every, you know, every like other car. R32 F40. And like, yeah, know, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, against his contemporaries then. So, I mean, you're looking at like, um, so 91, you know, you're still the Mark III Supras. Yeah. You're still, you know, uh, 91 Corvette is, you know, I mean, <laughs> shit, you know, I mean. A 91 you know, Corvette is not good. Not a good car. No, no. I mean, it's, it's much better than, than some an of 87 the, Corvette. 84 <laughs> is shit. The 80, 80 is that, that's, that's the first fire. year, right? That's oh, a yeah, cross, that's garbage. Yeah, you so, don't so the, the 84 Crossfire injected ones were bad. I mean, I said we exported them, so I, yeah. you know, I had a bunch of this stuff. So, I mean, you know, some people, you know, you think, because that's what I deal with now is mostly Japanese cars, but I mean, mm-hmm. American cars and, you know, it's Cyclone, Typhoon, Grand National. I mean, that's all, like, my personal stuff before, like, yeah. the Skylines and that. So I'm a kind of a turbo six-cylinder guy. Yeah. So, <clears throat> well, you, but, like, as far as, like, you pretty much, like, wrote, the book on the on skylines here in America. I mean, every, when I when I wanted to buy one and I was yeah. thinking about it, seven people said you have to talk to Sean. I mean, <laughs> right. and and seven smart people, not not randoms. I mean, right. Well, and then you have the what what was the the website? It's like GTR blog or something. Yeah, like GTR that. blog. GTR G- blog. G- 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 GTR USA. GTR USA. GTR blog. USA blog. blog. Yeah, that's I love I love this website because it breaks down um, in very simple terms. Uh oh, is oh, that shit. correct? No, you had it right. It did? It was there, yeah. What, what happened? happened? I, don't I don't know. know. It went away. I, know, um, I fucked it up. But I like the... Where's the section that's like, so you want to make 600 oh, horsepower? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. it depends. It's going to be Let's, here. How do I build a 500? Oh, how do I build? But uh, you really have like, these are the things you need for 400, 500, 600, 700. Right. It's just based on experience and what works. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a pain in the ass and I got my own opinions and the rest of this stuff. I mean, I have, I have history, you know, with the cars and mm. I have history in general. I have, um, you know, getting back to just general skyline stuff. I mean, you know, I start, like I said, I, I, family business, um, in 91, I went in the Navy. I was in the U S Navy for six years. So, mm. uh, I was a gas turbine electrician. I worked on gas uh, turbine electrician. Yeah. So I worked on, so is that plane engines? No. So main propulsion for ships, oh, we actually cool. used big jet engines as for main propulsion. Really? Yeah. Is it a uh, jet engine with a prop shaft coming out? Yeah. Of it? So basically, so you've How got does that work. Um, is it, they're geared down obviously. Yeah. yeah right? No. Okay, so, so I, uh, like I said, explaining this really simply and quickly, but Sorry. so, so, so there's, a, there's, okay, there's, there's no right. time limit. Take okay. the long way. Okay. All, right, all right. Well, no. So there's a compressor section and then there's an exhaust section. Okay? okay. And it's what you call aerodynamically coupled, which means it's not physically coupled like a turbocharger on a, on a, um, on, on an engine, right? The the exhaust wheel and the compressor wheel are are con, uh, yeah, there's a shaft. Are, they're that they're coupled. Them. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now, if you had another um, uh, exhaust wheel, yeah, further on down the line, and it's still spinning. 
It's like a turbo on a turbo. Yeah, yeah, and or and like so a basically, wheel, more basically, like, yeah. so what happens is on a on a on a uh, jet engine is it, it compresses air downwards. It goes into the the uh, combustion chamber and then it heats it up and then it would expand it past a set of blades. Okay, and, and so this whole big set of blades, which is called the turbine section, then was connected to a clutch, which is connected to a reduction gear, which then. You know, turn the shaft, yeah. and so on a on a FFG, which is what I was on, a small ship. There's two of these things. They were about, um, they were uh, about eighteen thousand horsepower each. Is this an FFG? That is an FFG. Holy I was on shit, FFG forty six USS Rents. USS Rents. R E N T Z. <clears throat> Rents. Let's see. Yeah. Your, I want to see your ship. Yeah, that was the ship that I was on. So, um, and uh, the not not a great. That is, a that is not that a, a great. That is a picture, shit image. But I apologize. But that's, so this has this has one or two jets. Two, two jets. So oh. so there's actually so the intakes for them are over here, right and here. then the exhaust is up here, up here, and then down 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 here is where the reduction gear, and and then up in here we had like what we call central control station where wow. we. So I, I worked on the control systems for those. So I worked on. Cool. The but most of the time I spent in a room not much bigger than this, uh, uh, checking light bulbs, changing light bulbs, and uh, making sure the the diesel because we had diesel generators, uh -huh. making sure the diesel generators ran. And so I spent I was at school for almost two years, and I spent about four years on the ship and four years basically in CCS and running the stuff. So, but I mean, I was a I, I got qualified uh, up to engineering officer of the watch, which. As a young, like, you know, so I was an E5, and, and as a young guy, um, you know, you're that's the highest engineer on that I watch. On that watch, yeah. right. Yeah, so I had, like, a, so I was an E5, I had an E8 under me. So that's, like, that's three, so, three like, I Three levels up, up but, but under, but under but me in, for you. in the watch, yeah. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you know, and, and so, because I was, I could run the turbines underway, but most of the time I worked on the, 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 the um, electric plant. So, and then in port, you know, what we call engineering oh. duty officer. Here, I found so, I found a much a much, much clearer, better, clearer picture. Holy of, shit! It's huge. Yeah, this one's huge. Yeah, yeah I, I feel yeah. I feel I didn't do it justice so, before. Here's a much see, better image. See, so and we call it. You know, these are more or less like um, uh, uh, torpedo fodder. You know, a little tiny ship. You what know, does this ship have? I see like a missile or something. Yeah, in the and front, actually, right? they ended up taking them off after after I was on. I mean, this ship is being um, decommed and. Sunk. When was this thing built? Looks kind of old school. Ah, <sighs> was uh, eighty. Eighty something. Yeah, like nineteen eighty. What's it like to live on something like that? I mean, um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I mean, it ends up being. So I went in the Navy when I was seventeen, mm -hmm. and so I was on the ship when I was about nineteen. Till I was twenty three, and I mean, when you're underway and you're out at sea and stuff, I mean, it's just you know you're just doing your job and working and doing the things that you. And the fact that and, you're and on the, a ship is not really relevant. Is that yeah? Like I, mean, I love boats. Would right. I enjoy working on a boat for four years or no, not? Not really. I mean, it's a, it's a you know I kind of made a joke afterwards, you know, because we were talking about going on a cruise, and I'm like, man, I spent too much. I spent all my freaking time on a ship, but I mean, it's a bit different. But yeah. um, you know, it's just it's just a work and yeah. a job. But I mean, it's 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 pretty. It can be pretty intense because I mean, you can be some place. I mean, I joined the ship in the Persian Gulf in '93. They flew you out and uh -huh. pff, on yeah, and yeah. So yeah, you know, typical military. Feel uncomfortable, dangerous, or not? Do you feel uh, safe on the ship? Because uh, you have generally, a you thing. feel pretty safe yeah. because I mean, you're you know, you're uh, or you are you know, surrounded by. You know, the U.S. military, <laughs> you know, presence, even though this, so like I said, say this is a small ship. It's 450 feet long and 20 feet wide. And this is small, 200 people. Mm. And then, you know, I mean, uh, you have a tendency you get along with everybody and, you know, you party together. And I mean, it's like, you know, when you would hit port and stuff like that, you know, I mean, somebody's it's what you think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there was a thing about some uh, some English sailors recently that were in Florida and they're like, you know, they got into some big bra bar brawls and some that other shit. Right. You know, I mean, I have possibly been in a bar <laughs> brawl in, in Malaysia at some point. So, yeah, um, did you did you get to see some like really amazing places? Though, uh, yeah, I mean, I is again, I went to I visited the sh I joined up the ship in the Persian Gulf in '93, um, and you know, Oman and and Saudi Arabia and all through there, and then back through Australia, which was actually pretty nice because I had family in. Uh, 
family in Australia. And, uh, and so, and then, but I mean, Vanuatu, India, Malaysia, Thailand, I mean, that's a, all that's, the, you know, all, all the Pacific. So I, yeah. I did a whole bunch of stuff on the, on the Pacific side. And, and like I said, because I did have family in Australia and that it's, it was nice to be able to actually visit like my grandparents, yeah. you know, and, and things like that. Most people won't have grandparents, Most people don't have grandparents there, right? in Australia. Yeah, with Philippines, visit, yeah. you know, I mean, went to Philippines and, uh, that's pretty you know, cool, man. Actually, um, I spent a week in uh, Cabo San Lucas, a week in Mazatlan, a week in Vancouver. So it's all, all good stuff when you're, you know, 20 year old. You yeah. Know? So, you know, all good places. 20 to year go. old with a uniform. Yeah, I mean, you didn't have to wear your uniform most of the time. No, so, it didn't nah. work. It didn't work with the... Uh... It, it works, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know. Anyway, back to cars, right? Or, or Dude, we, you know what? This, you is know? A, this is a flexible show. Flexible, I don't I don't yeah. mind spending 15 right. minutes on naval ships. Yeah. What actually... I meant to ask... You're right. What did that ship do? What was that ship's role? So, it, uh, FFG's role is anti-submarine. Okay, so tor- anti- so torpedoes? No, or? no, anti like listening, listening oh. for for and and so uh, with helos and going out and but most of the time they would do like um, support for like uh, for carriers, but we did a lot of independent steaming and we just um, we just got to go lots of cool places. I mean, basically, mm. we just That's go out cool, and you do some weird off the wall shit. But I said I didn't get to see. I mean, you don't get to. See, where I was, I just watched dials and screens and yeah. shit. So, you <laughs> yeah. know, I just like, You're you know, in a room with I'm in full, a room full of gauges, full of gauges. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, and anyway, that's kind of my, my history and my background. And so then in the Navy, like everything has backups and, mm-hmm. and, you know, all that stuff. And so then, you know, I got out of the Navy. I went in the family business. By then the Japanese recession had started to go down and it was about 97 and then, you know, my family, again, we were, they were still exporting and all of that. And that was when actually the MotorX stuff started yeah, to so come up. Yeah, so MotorX, <laughs> I don't know if anyone, I mean, I know some people do, but I think the, the story of MotorX has been muddled by legend. And it is. It is all so fucked up. Do you want to give us the, the real story? or I'll, I'll give you as much of the real story as, uh, as people listen to. I mean, there was a Zero to 60 article, you know, yeah. that, uh, that Richard Chang did that mm-hmm. was that had a lot of the real information in there, and I did that, you know, right afterwards. Um, zero, yeah, Zero to 60. I'm just going to find it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so... You know, basically, in about '97, I talked to, an to Hero. Yeah, yeah. I, I talked to Hero Nanahoshi, who was he was an exporter. He was an exporter friend, and um, he, you know, he got the idea. He, young guy, and he he was you know pretty smart, and he lived in the U.S. for a while. He'd he'd, he'd uh, and he decided that he wanted to try to see if we could bring Skylines to the U.S. And everybody says, "Oh, you can't do that." You know, I mean, uh, hindsight is 2020 and people like oh well you know blah 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 i would have just done this or just done that i'm like man you weren't there so you can't really talk about this just wasn't something that was available you know just something wasn't that's going to happen so so hero went to um advance or and um he which is one of the people who he exported to and Mm -hmm. and he he got a got a loan got a million dollar loan and started to actually you know move forward on bringing the cars into into u.s compliance he contracted with some guys on the east coast and you know and started to do that so So what would it take i mean the 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 major stuff to get a to get a crash testing crash testing was the big thing right so so you have to buy cars and then give them to the nhsta no no, we have to do do it it ourselves Yeah. Wow. So, so how do you do that? You get a lab? Y- yeah. So the, we actually used a place up in uh, up in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it was uh, MGA Labs up there, and so I wasn't directly involved. Like I talked to Hero about it. I was you know interested in it, all that stuff. I mean, and then um, but in April '99, I kind of got pissed off with my family and told my dad to go fuck himself. And you know, because you know working it family happens. business, you yeah, know, I mean, it, it, and and so anyway, and so I kind of was in between somewhere to something to do, and so um, I started to work with Hero him for Hero and all that stuff, and so. Um, uh, that was when we started to get a little bit more into uh, crash testing, and so we were we were getting ready to do maybe three third or the fourth crash test mm-hmm. or something that we were doing. And so I flew up to um, we flew to Chicago. Actually, stayed at a friend Nick Wong's um, house there in Chicago, and we went up to the to the lab and we watched uh, one of the side impact tests, and so. 
you know, a lot of people say, oh, MotorX didn't do this or they didn't do that or, you know, whatever. Well, you know, all along the NHTSA was involved with like what was going to happen. And, you know, we had to, so we said, you know, the, the cars are substantially similar, right? And so we we could pick what we wanted you to mean crash test. You 32, 33, 34, right. they're substantially the similar. Substantially so they let similar. you do one for all? For all. In the in the beginning, we said, hey, look, these, you know, with these early cars, you know, they were, um, not all of them had airbags and stuff like that. And so it was an option. And so, but these... Were airbags an option in 32s? In, in late 32. Really? I, I, I think we just sold one with with an airbag with that wonky four spoke oh, wheel fuck, in the it's airbag. Air. It's, it's the a, Maxima wheel. It's a fucking ugly steering wheel, <laughs> yeah. man. It's, it's horrible. Um, but uh, the uh, is so the in the basically the later R thirty two had those available, and I mean there's the, we could go into all the specifics about the regulations of when and all that, but but we basically said look let's crash test these R thirty three GTSs because that's going to be the cheapest for I mean. If you're going to crash this car, are you going to crash this the most expensive no, Mustang yeah, yeah. you can? Or, are you going to, no. or if the NHTSA says, yeah, you know what? You can use these cars if you want. Here, this is what we're going to use. Is this okay? Yes, that's okay. Okay, well, then we're not going to crash... R33 yeah. GTRs. We're going to crash test these because they're substantially similar. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, because that pops up a bit where people say, oh, well, you guys didn't crash test this. And it's like, well... Man, we were given the choice. You know, we yeah. were, we we told them what we we're gonna do. We we're given a choice of what to do, and this is what we wanted to really crash. So, um, so we did the crash testing and the rest, and uh, you know, it ended up taking. Uh, let's see, until uh, until two thousand, and in two thousand they released. Uh, let's. I'm trying to think now. No, it was no November fifteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Was the the first car was released. And so then they published in the Federal Register in 2000, and so then we were able to legally import cars. So and there was there's more than just the NHTSA. There's also EPA in California, mm -hmm. and so EPA side then um, seven years old. You have to do what's um, if it's less than seven years old. You have to do uh, get a certificate conformance of for it. If it's over that, was what we call modern tests, which means you have to modify and test it. Um, the difference, Meaning like additional catalytic converters or whatever, yeah, whatever it, it, you might need. Right. You know, I said it, it start all this stuff gets complicated because there's so many different pieces and yeah, parts. Yeah. And like, sometimes, you know, I leave things out and somebody will like, you know, you know, be pedantic enough to, to oh, you missed this. And I'm like, I don't know, it's just, I didn't want to, yeah. I, I'm I not just, trying to gotcha. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, some people do and they're like, oh, well you didn't mention this. Or you didn't say that. Or, you know, Hey, you know, because actually VCP thirty two is still active, which means you can you could you could actually import R thirty three GTRs under VCP thirty two right now. Really, but the problem is that when we did the crash testing, you know, when we did crash testing, we 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 put some information in there that was confidential, and then also um, uh, some parts were made specifically for us. And because mm -hmm. we did it that way, we made it impossible for even me to actually do it now and oh, then oh really yeah so, so the so only motor x could do it is that well it was actually jk which was which was the place that motor x contracted with oh man and so contracts on contracts on yeah contracts. i got you know it's so did shitty. so you said you did the a few rounds of crash testing yes you would you front is impact, that, rear so impact. front rear side, side. Offset. it was actually yeah and, and i mean we used one car for two of the tests and then one car for the other side impact. Although I think they ended up hitting both sides of that car because the crash test that we went to, um, the, uh, the bumper went under the, the crash bar. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Well, did those cars, you know, do they need to be, uh, heavily modified? Not heavily, but they, but they needed mods, you know? Bit? Yeah. They needed some modifications. And so there was modifications that needed to be done to the cars and then EPA and then, you know, California. And so, uh, I mean, we used to charge shit, uh, 17 to $25,000 to do it, which actually Seems sounds like a bargain. Like a bargain. Right. Yeah, like exactly. A bargain like it, it's not really that much money. I no, mean, it's people like would whine just to do the smog now. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people would whine about that yeah. then. Yeah, exactly. Tend to do California. So, yeah. so yeah, it's, it was, a. Uh, it, that was pretty much of a bargain. I mean, the the cost that we were selling cars for then is is sometimes less than what I'm selling them for now. 
And and you know we didn't sell a lot of cars. I mean, yeah. definitely like the first one. I, I how mean, many, how many Motor X cars do you think? One hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty. One hundred twenty. One hundred thirty. Yeah. I, I mean, I have like VIN numbers for I think around one hundred and five. But there's a few that I miss, that uh-huh. I that I that I wasn't around for that I miss because I used to do all the compliance like packages and stuff like yeah. put everything together to send to the NHTSA. See that that's like another thing that people say. Well, Motorx faked everything, and it's like I had to put together a package for every single one of those Motorx cars. Mm-hmm. I had to have photos like front side, you know, dash airbag, like all the stuff. Mm-hmm. All had to be put together and sent to the NHTSA. And this is like, you know, digital cameras, you know, in 2000, in 90, mm, 2000, you know, they weren't so great. And no, they weren't like so, you know, right. Shit. And, yeah. and, you know, and putting that, those things together, you know, I mean, and photo editing and all that kind of shit, it, it didn't really exist. So, yeah. um, you know, NHTSA got and has all of those packages. So where did it all go wrong? Oh, here, like, party, man. Who fucking go out to a hostess club and spend, like, you know, $1,500 a night on fucking Monday. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, um, so, again, this gets back to the young thing. Yeah. Young, you know, and, like, a good amount of money and go out and just party, okay. you know? And so, um, and, and so things weren't getting done and things weren't, you know, staying on top of things. Uh, what happened to me is like, you know, we had some customers up from Seattle. One guy flew down like three times to pick up his car because Hero told him it was ready. And I'm like, man, the car's not even here. <laughs> and and the the shitty part was like, so, you know, I'm working for Hero and I'm there. I'm sitting in the office and, you know, a customer shows up and it's like, uh, you know, guys there. Hey, I'm here to pick up my car. Hero said it's ready. I'm like, oh, it's not ready. It's still down at the lab. It's still down at Gene K. And... Um, and so, you know, and then I'm trying to call Hero from the office, and he doesn't pick up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, seriously, this, you yeah, know, you try a... to call him, like, 14 times, yeah. you know, and you're like... Okay. Yeah. You know, and I'm calling from the office number. I'm not calling him from, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, some... some shady number. Right. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, you know, man, you know, so after a while, I mean, I loved dealing with the GTR. I loved, um, you know, doing you know, all the GTR related things, I just couldn't handle working with Hero, you know, and, and Hero just, you know, he just went down that path of just, you know, I mean, he got, you know, a little bit more into drugs, a little bit more into everything else. And just, you know, I mean, it just, it it just fucked everything up. I mean, and if he would have just, you know, kind of kept on the path, it would have been fine. So then I left in, uh, I think 2002, and so, you know, I was the one who was doing all the work, like as far as compliance work yeah, yeah. and all the rest of the things. And so, you know, after I left, then nobody really knew how to do what I did. And so, you know, I did, I said, about 100 cars when I was there. And after I left in the next four years, they did like 20. Wow. Okay. So, and so <clears> then, <throat> so business is not going well. It's not being run well yep. once you left. Mm-hmm. What what happened with th- the the freak out of people's cars getting confiscated. Where did that all come from? Um, it didn't. Well, or was that, was that were else. those two unrelated things something that became else. related yeah, those to are, each other? Those are okay. So, um, uh, what happened was there was a lot of cars that weren't being brought into compliance. Okay, and so there was about, like I said, about thirty cars that were just sitting. And and here was intended to be brought into right, compliance, but, but hadn't, hadn't been done. hadn't hadn't okay. been done, and okay. and so and then the customer started complaining and talking to the NHTSA, and this is what kind of brought all the mm. end around, and so um, you know Hero tried to do some weird shit, and I mean in the end, you know, like a lot of people say, well, you know, what happened? Well, um, the Hero actually got busted for attempted kidnapping. Oh. Well, that's right. That's that's where here's where the story right. takes a hard right. left. Holy right. shit! Really? Right. Yeah. So he, is he in prison? No, he he did go to prison. For he a did go while. to prison. He did go to prison for a little while. So so there was you know again money and and so he so I, as I said I left in two thousand two. One of the, some of the other guys, the Japanese guys, 
um, that were the export side of Advance, they left not that long after that. Mm -hmm. And so then Hero was basically on his own, and then he looked for more funding, and he got one guy to come in and bring money and bring cars and all this stuff. This other guy, Hiroki. Hero and Hiroki. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. That's just that's that's okay. real life. That's how it is. So, <laughs> so anyway, and then, you know, I think that Hero... Because he he'd done it, and and this had actually happened. I'll tell you this, but but in Hero had sold some of these cars of Hiroki's and not given him the money back for it, oh, and kind of you know it's starting to you know turn it into almost a Ponzi. So, you know, so some of the the guys that that I knew when I was there, because people started to contact me after I left, maybe another you know year or two later, and say, hey, you know, my car's not getting done, you know, blah blah blah, what's going on? So, this these two guys, uh, Jack and Jeff Tao. They, um, you know, they had a bunch of cars and they're like, hey, what's going on? Can you help us? And so, you know, I started to help them out a little bit with some stuff. And that was the, the RB guys, RB motoring guys. And so I, um, I said, yeah, you know, I can help you guys, you know, sell some cars and do some things. And, you know, I mean, one step removed from here on all that stuff. And anyway, you know, some of some of the cars that were were, um, uh, you know, Hero had they just kind of disappeared. And so, you know, but I, I had one of their cars. I had like this R33, I had a white R33 GTR. And I'm there, I'm driving it. I get on the 60 freeway and a white R33 passes me. Mm -hmm. And this is one, you know, and so. And this, there's like a hundred of these in the country, right? Right, yeah. yeah. And I, I get on the freeway and there, and so anyway, I, I, you know, I kind of wave the guy down and we talk to him and all that stuff. And it's fucking one of Jack's missing cars. Okay. And so the guys had bought it. And so I. So somebody sold it to them. Well, Hero or Hero sold, he sold it to yeah. them, but then he didn't give the money to Jack. <laughs> okay. So and none of and none of the compliance was done. No, the was compliance done. was okay. done. The okay, compliance okay. done, but 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 you know he hadn't given the money, and so then you know I and by then it was you know it was a hundred something thousand dollars worth of cars or yeah. something of of Jacks and and Hero had owed him money on, and so you know I went in there one day and like you know hey what the fuck is up you know and so you know they didn't really they, they kind of got on the other side. Some of the guys there in Motorex got kind of on the other side of me because I was like, you know, what the fuck, dude? I saw this car on the on the freeway and I talked to the guy. He's got his number. I mean, should I call him and say, hey, you know, there's this kind of a little bit of a dispute on the ownership of this vehicle. I mean, we can start to go down those paths, but, you know... um but that's again that's just kind of some of the fuck ups of what yeah. hero hero and and so anyway, towards the end, there was a bunch of cars that that went missing, and so uh 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 they said this guy Tom had i mean some of the stuff is in the article and uh -huh. and so in the zero to sixty article this guy tom had had taken them and he was going to register them for somebody because they weren't actually getting done right mm -hmm. and so um he was going to register them for him and then he'd turn around and sold them but i almost think that hero had probably given into him and then not paid the money onto hiroki this is craziness right so yeah. anyway so they so they find this guy and they jump him and they like tasered him and uh wow. anyway and then hero and hiroki end up getting arrested wow. That's so crazy. So, and this was uh, 2006, okay, 2005, so this is, this is 2005. Yeah. yeah, this is about 2005. This is quite a long time after. And yeah. so I'd actually, he met Hero. I, I met up with him like a week before all that shit went down because it was like so many people were asking what's going on. And I'm like, look, let me see if I can help to try to finish some, where these cars are, what's happening, what can we do? Yeah. And then in the end, what happened is, um, I, I have something on my GTR blog thing. I just have a thing called Motor X, the letter, where basically at the end, uh, if you just yeah, uh, it, it put a space and then just put space and then put, put Motor X letter. Yeah. So, so there was a letter... So, that uh, so this is actually a picture of the crash test. The yeah. end. Oh, there's the crash testing. How about that? That's the yeah, Arthur. Here's the letter. So this one is. Uh, I don't know what date that was. The Can we date see that? Is uh, maybe I might have edited it out. Uh, so maybe anyway. You did. So anyway, this is just. Um, this is basically NHTSA said. Look, we know you imported this car with the, and you wanted to bring it into compliance. Mm -hmm. Motorex didn't do it. Fuck it. Here you have your car. It's good. We don't care. So you NHSCA wrote a letter saying, we this know this, this is. car is not in compliance, yep. but we don't really give a shit. You can have it because we know you intended 
actually to originally bring it into compliance. <laughs> okay. So, you know, because some people say, oh, well, motor cars, you know, they're not legal or, you know, I, they, they all got seized or some other things well, happened. Well, the, the, what I heard and apparently right, right. is not correct right. is that a bunch of cars were brought into compliance mm-hmm. and then a bunch more cars were not, yep. but, but papers implied that they were. That's, yep. that's what and, I heard. Is, and, and, and so, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, you know, I have, I mean, I have one fuck up, which is, you know, Big Bird, which is R33, which was imported with the, the Fast and Furious car, uh-huh. which, you know, imported, which I used as a drag car for a while and all that stuff. And that car, that car has another, you know, kind of fucked up history story <laughs> you know i mean there's lots of stories and and stuff i could tell you all kinds of weird skyline things that i've done over the years and what happened but so in fact of the, that you in, endeavor to lawfully import the subject vehicle and have it brought into compliance with all of you mm-hmm. but we're frustrated in your ability to obtain the release of vehicle blah 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 beyond your control uh, dis- uh, the described above decided to release the DOT conformance bond covering the subject vehicle. Basically, okay. they're saying it's legal. So, okay, you know, and that was the. So, so anyway, that so the cars that apparently were confiscated were they were not confiscated because of this. They were confiscated because of an ownership dispute. Yeah. So, wow that it was that turned into a game of telephone yeah. that resonated in the. The enthusiast whole. community for years, and it's still it's still a people lot of are people. so afraid of skylines because they think these boogeymen are coming for their skylines. Yeah, but I mean, some of them are are um, you know Not there that are you should have a shady imported car. I there mean. are there are tons of them, especially <laughs> yeah. from Florida. So Dude, you know, Florida, Florida has Do all not of the. Buy a car no, if it has Florida a Florida, title. if it has a Florida title, unless you have like everything, including somebody's blood type, and you know, I mean, their fucking sample of their DNA. I mean, you got to be careful. So, I mean, there are. A lot of illegal cars and there were always illegal cars here mm-hmm. cars that are imported incorrectly now you what know, were some of the ways that people would bring cars in incorrectly like well, in parts and in, then in parts and assemble them yeah and so you know here here's the thing right i mean honestly like if, if you have a car and anything in particular and you're quiet and you don't say shit and you just have that car nobody's probably going to mess with you but if you have an illegal car and you are on um, YouTube all yeah, the time yeah, yeah. and you're driving it around and you're doing all this stuff, you are going to have a problem. I yeah. can guarantee you that yeah. somebody eventually will say, what the fuck is Matt doing with this? You know, <laughs> wh- whatever, you know, whatever this is, you know, you're, you know, you're the guys are going to get busted. They're going to yeah. find something. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's going to crawl up in and out your ass it's and you're like, going to have uh, a good problem. It's right. keep it quiet. You, right. Keep, yeah. So, keep it quiet. so, you know, and so my biggest problem with a lot of that stuff is that, you know, I have a problem when people turn around and they sell it on to somebody else. And they and say, they oh, this is, and this is a good car. You know? So somebody has this illegal car they imported through Florida, you know, to say an R34, R30, yeah. whatever, an R34. And, you know, and then they say, they, they, the thing is that when they turn around and they try to sell this car for 130 grand or something, I'm like, man, this car's got bad paper. It's yeah. worth it's worth what it is in Jap- minus, you know, uh, it's what worth it's worth in Japan less or whatever. Than Japan, right? right, yeah. So, you know, don't pay. What you know, we would consider Motor X money for an R34 or yeah. or legal money for an R34 when this car's got shitty paper and then guys are like oh it's state titled it's state titled and it's like yeah but the problem the problem is that and it doesn't happen a lot but I, I like some examples of when it does happen which is um, so Kaizo was a big one so so the stuff happened with um, them bringing in cars as kit cars uh-huh. so it's fa- Fast and Furious four. The, the blue R34 that yeah. was in there, that was a Kaizo car. That was a uh, cars that were imported as kits, and um, they weren't obviously kits. Yeah. And, um, and and so a, a bunch of those cars got popped. A lot of them stayed, but a lot of them got popped. Uh-huh. And people lost their cars, and they lost their money, and lost you know other stuff. So that's the, my biggest issue is that the guys who turn around and sell these cars on, and then this guy has it. So a car is trackable and traceable. Totally. Okay. You know, when it was registered in Florida, it has a Florida title and Florida information. You take it to Ohio, you take it to Pennsylvania, all that stuff. All that it is... It follows It you. follows you. Yeah. So when that guy in Florida gets busted, and, and it has happened before, there's been uh, a couple of different instances where the one guy's got popped, and then they just fucking follow the line. And man, the... the and they the, show up at someone's it, house. You know, like, I call it like a hot potato, man, because yeah, the last, yeah. last fucker, uh, you know, holding it, there's a guy who loses it. He yeah. loses his car. He loses his money. Yeah. 
and it sucks. Yeah. And so, you know, people are, you know, a lot of people are prepared for that. And some cars, you know, I mean, it just, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does and it can happen. I'll give you an anecdote real yeah. quick. Yeah. And I'm sure this yeah. is going to be one of a hundred. You're going to yeah. roll your yeah. eyes. You've heard this so many times, I mm -hmm. bet. Mm -hmm. Before I bought the 32 from you, yep. which was a fucking ace car, by the way. And actually, yep. I wouldn't be surprised. I sold it to someone who loves it. And yep. he's a commenter, and he will probably appear in the comments and okay. talk about it. Um, and one day, I'm going to buy another one because I actually miss it. Okay. Um, before that, I found on Craigslist a 33 GTR. Right. I knew it was shady because yep. it's not 25 years right, old. Right. Nevertheless, I was intrigued. Yep. Just just in the casual. And I think I spoke with you, as a matter of fact, afterwards, um, because I went there and the title said 1995 NISS. Yeah. Well, no, but that's, but in California, that's actually what it says. But what was the, but it didn't, it, what it said was it was, it stood for Nissani. Yeah. Not Nissan. Yeah. See, that's a Kaizo which car. Which was a Kaizo car. Yeah. But unless you knew, like it was, yeah. it was you slightly see, they did different. That, they did that on purpose. Yeah. So that it shows, because you see a California title on the title itself only has four right. positions. <laughs> yeah. So N-I-S-S. That shows it, so it, Nissani N I S S I A. You know, yeah. I mean, so basically, you'd op the title looked legit, uh -huh. but then you'd open the hood, uh -huh. and there was a plate yeah. that said uh, Nissani, uh, and right, you go, yeah, right. "What the fuck is that?" Right, and so you know, that's. I mean, I know the guy who did that really well. <laughs> so I, I mean, I, I I visited him before he got too deep into all those things and uh -huh. all this kit car stuff and and all of that, and I, I you know, I, I I tried to help him in in trying to do stuff, you know, if he was saying he was going to do it as a kit car, you know, if you had a, a body and you imported it and you put a, you know, a, a VQ or an LS engine or something like that, then that's, you know, I mean, that's kind of a, a kit, right? Yeah. I mean, that's not what the car was originally. Uh, the problem, the thing is that all these kit car laws are real ambiguous and there's no real definition about where something starts to become a kit and where it isn't. Yeah. But what you can't do, according to the EPA, is you cannot import a disassembled vehicle for the purposes of evading yeah e evading so uh, of evading the law common laws. sense fucking right import. right right so so you know and that's the thing is like i mean some guys i mean i get guys fuck i could probably pull up in our you know in our emails you know every day every week somebody says oh i found a way to import a car and it's like you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's like, man, I've been doing this shit for 20 fucking years, dude. I mean, there's nothing that I haven't heard or seen yeah, or yeah, yeah. or whatever. What's there's the nothing most ridiculous scheme someone has attempted I mean, to fucking throw on you. I mean, those are just that's just kind of a normal thing. I mean, I've had tons of people, uh, you know, that Bro, just I got just, a private plane. Right, you know, that's just all these scheme, you know, these guys are, are are shady to start with and then, you know, they they get somebody I, I I'm so surprised sometimes they can get somebody to buy into this. Yeah. You know, like there was some guy, um, I, and I have some information. Some guy who's ex-Marine, he had some like FBI contacts and all this shit, and he had, he gave some dude like ninety six grand for an R thirty four, for a car that he the guy couldn't import, and 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 he sent me an email, and I told him to stay away from it, and then like, you know, a year or something later, yeah. there's a fucking Jalopnik article from this guy saying, oh, he gave this guy money, and it. And it's like, I had to go back and look and say, look at my email and yeah, say, don't fucking buy this yeah, car. That's yeah, what it said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, how can I have any sympathy for your yeah, dumbass? Yeah, yeah, uh, Totally. You, you know, I mean, it's like, I, I, I tell people the truth and I can't, I'm not going to tell people like um, things that don't actually happen in real life. A hundred percent. And, and, you know, I mean, uh, it gets down to speeding, right? Okay. So you're, you're, you know, our speed limit is, fuck, I don't even know what our speed limit is in on freeway. 65? 65 here. Yeah. 65 yeah. ish. 70 in some places. I mean, but you know, you're going 80, you know, that's normal. Right. But there are consequences for going 80 miles an hour. There's a lot worse than if you're going 80 miles an hour in a shady car. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm just saying, there are no, just yeah, driving yeah, on yeah. the road, there's, there yeah. are consequences for that, and you know what those consequences are. And so then if you do get pulled over, you know, those, you're, you're, you're going to you know, face some kind of you know, ticket or whatever, a warning. But you know, just because you got a warning doesn't mean that you know, the next time you won't. Mm -hmm. And so like, a lot of the times, and, and what you hear a lot on these, on these illegally imported cars is, oh, my buddy got pulled over or my buddy had it for 10 years or my buddy's, you know, you hear this kind of thing yeah, all the time. Data is not the plural of anecdotes. No. Sir. So that's, that's the, that's the thing is it, yeah. okay. The thing is most police, if you have insurance and registration and that most police 
they don't, don't know. Yeah. They don't care. They're not going to look at it. They're not going to give you a hard time about it. So, but doesn't but, mean you can't get fucked by somebody. Yeah, I mean that's how you know the Kaizo stuff supposedly yeah. started was somebody got pulled over and and you know they were being a little bit of a pain in the ass to the cop and the cop had like um, customs ties and started to push from there. I mean, yeah. all that it takes is you know one person because. All that information is public. Yeah. You know, or I mean, well, you know, it's all it's all tied together. Yeah. So 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 when you when a, if a police officer pulls up, pulls over a car, and then that car they pull over the skyline. Yeah. You know the skyline you had. You're you know, and they can see. Oh well, you owned it, and then you bought it from me. Yeah. Right. And so if it's if it was imported incorrectly, then that's you know they wanted to come back to me, and they're going to see that me I have imported. Two dozen uh, cars right, or whatever. Right. Now, yeah, you're, now yeah, they're yeah, going to go find cars, all the right. cars. Yeah. yeah. So now, if they want to be a pain in the ass, they, they can. And so that's like my my warning to people. And then guys, you know, I, I try to warn people, you so they know understand what's going on. And then people say, "Oh, my buddy's had it for ten years, and he's never and he's been pulled over ten times, and he, it's no problem." I'm like, "Okay, he's lucky. Okay, he cool. might not be lucky the next time. Yeah, depends so, on the cop. Right? What?" Does a uh, does a shady car that's already here mm-hmm. have any value at all? And if so, parts. what might that parts? That's it. I Strip mean, it parts. It's done. You know, it, it's technically never going to be legal. So unless, unless what happens with it when it once twenty five happens? It, it, the, once it the paperwork's shady, right. it's shady. It wasn't imported right. Can you start over? Can I mean, you send you, it back to Japan and start over? I mean, not that you that's could, a, you but could. then you'd still need to like figure out some something to do as far as you know title getting the paperwork yeah. right you know you need to export it on the title and then you know i mean it would be possible but it's you know basically the kind of people who did that kind of stuff probably they've just kind of fucked it up so yeah. and again it's it's mostly you know the somebody who's going to lose it is because they did something else stupid you know i mean so you know if if there are you know owners who of shady cars that have done something else you know yeah you know, slamming but it drugs, doesn't. doing something else. Yeah. And, you know, they're, you know, there goes their car. And then, you know, that's going to kind of tie it all together. Although yeah. there are some things going on right now with, like, some guys out in Florida. There's a guy, like, Black Ops that got, uh, has some shit going on. So yeah. there's always, there's always dramas. something. There's always some little drama. And I feel like the, the Skyline is the most, you know, the most obvious. Because like, it's the most could, desired you, car. Yeah. And so. it's just, and it's the it's like the figurehead for the whole JDM kind of thing, right? It is. Right? And R34 is, you know, and Fast and Furious I and all the other shit. I fucking love the 34, so. dude. Every one I've driven has been great. I, I've, I still much rather have the 30. I mean, I put really? lots of miles on the 34, you know. On yeah. The, on what do the, you like better purple. about the 32? I just like it small and a little more raw. Yeah. And it's just like, to me... That's the car, and the thirty four just you know again I I put tons of miles on the yeah. like the the OBD two car we're working on and stuff and I still much prefer to drive a thirty two. That's so, cool. So I like the six speed. I like I do like the six speed, and I like uh, I don't know. I, I just like the style better of the thirty four. I just like how it looks better. Yeah. I think I think they the, I think the driving experience in in my experience is eighty five to ninety percent the same. Right. Yeah. Not much different. Not much. Yeah. And I mean you know I mean we're like so far on on these cars and the horsepower and the other things yeah. that they do, you know, people. But I'm like, eh, you know, what's the real it. what's the real sweet spot for you in Skyline horsepower, where where you could date where you like a daily drivable pump gas, not a pain in the dick. What's the sweet spot? Four fifty five hundred. I think four fifty is yeah. a real good number. You know, four fifty five hundred car gets down and and it. It's good. It's you know. I mean, the it, drive it will, line will handle that. Uh-huh. It's it's not a lot of you don't I mean, have to reinforce a bunch uh, of shit. You know, you start to get a third gear once you start to push them hard mm-hmm. and stuff. So I mean, there's fixes for everything. Is that's the thing about the Skyline. I mean, it's like supported like Mustang. Yeah. Right. So there's so much stuff available for Camaro for Mustang. You know, there's so much aftermarket support for it. If you want to do something to some. Mustang, you know, mm-hmm. Fox Body Mustang. You want to put an LS in a Fox Body Mustang. Doable. That, that a is swap absolutely kit. a kit that yeah, is available. You know, yeah. you want to make it twin turbo, you want to do this, you want to do that, you want to supercharge, you want to blah, 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 blah. You so want to do the, all these parts. The well, problems have been solved. Right. So the Skyline, it's all there too. The, so um, the one thing I will say, the one thing I wasn't able to do when I had my car, yep. um, I actually you took it, it to, long. I, I didn't have it for long, I had it for about eight months. 
Um, Did you really? Yeah. I thought it was less than that. Uh, it might have been like seven. Yeah. But, you know, I, I didn't want to get rid of it. You know right. what happened? The reason right. I had to yeah. get rid of it is right. because my friend Roland right. owned this phenomenal building. Right. And enabled me mm-hmm. by saying, but he owned this building in West L.A. He right. kept a couple of his cars there. He moved to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. But he kept the building. And he said, you take care of the building. Keep the fucking, keep it clean. Keep it safe. You can keep your cars there. No charge. Right. Right. No problem. Right, right. And that went on for like two years. Right. <laughs> so right. I went from one car there to fucking five. Right. And then he went, uh, just sold the building, bro. Got to clear it out. And I went, right. fuck. And I had to fire sale three cars, including right. that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and my friend, uh, my now friend, Justin, uh, he came down. I reviewed his car for right. a video, right. and I drove the skyline to the shoot. Right. And it, he fell in absolutely in love with it in first sight, and and bought it a week later. Right. Um, I will buy another one, and when I do, it'll be from you. Um, but uh, the one thing I couldn't, I took it to Fontana Nissan for service. Yeah. Actually, they have a they service skylines. They have a skyline sure. specialist specialist there. Uh, but they could not fix the air conditioning. Yeah, you know, air conditioning pain in the ass. Um, I have, but we've been fixing it. Have we've you, been, fi- have you, is there, is yeah, there a fix now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I mean, it's just uh, air conditioning is probably one of the most complicated systems on a car, mm-hmm. but why it's solvable in all these other cars. Why is this not, why is this such a hard problem for the skyline specifically? No, it's not. It's just, it's, it's, it's the same. Oh. It, I mean, the system itself is, is the same as any other air conditioning system. It's just, you know, figuring out whatever part. Because it, it's a, you know it's a mechanical hydraulic with gas, you know right, system is, that. So that, there's nothing strange about this. No. Is, it's just the parts availability or it's diagnosis it or yeah. yeah all right. Just, so maybe they just didn't want. Uh, to they just with it. you know they're uh, so the biggest you know the biggest issues normally are so you got the, the easiest ones are the sensors mm. right so sensors go bad sensors unplug cuz it's like automatic that. the the automatic yeah yeah the right so so, so so outside sensor inside sensor so like even like so in the um on the dash there's a uh, an interior sensor and sometimes when people change the radio and stuff they unplug that and they never plug it back in oh yeah and so and then now it thinks it's like you know whatever uh, yeah, nine hundred degrees or, or, or minus <laughs> minus forty inside yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to turn the AC on. So, um, and then you know, just in so then you've got like actuators that actuate the the doors, you know, and so then sometimes those things jam up too, and so too then smart for its own good. So you know, it's just like I said, it's really complicated system, and so the the problem is that like you know, if you don't have somebody sit down and figure some of those things out, I mean, so there's a, there's a guy on the East Coast. I, there's another Sean actually. An East Coast Sean, Sean Kirby out there that um, he does a lot of stuff with AC and and he um, uh, I don't know no, no, you're not, not going to find, find him, him on he's, Google. You know, That's he's, okay. He's uh, but anyway, he does a lot of stuff with with Skylines <clears throat> and he's out there in Florida. He did, he he's worked a lot of crap out with them and and so again, twenty five year old car, yeah, R twelve. So and then so if you convert it to R134, then you know they're a little bit more pissed off because you know the compressor itself isn't yeah. really made for that. But you can you know um, the clutches go bad, and so then it'll pop fuses and stuff like that, and then um, you know just general leaks yeah. and things. So um, I mean we you know we we fight with a bunch of systems on cars, and we you know I had like five brand new AC compressors, and I I sold them all. So and they were like a thousand dollars each. So. Yeah. The um, next but, Skyline I buy will have pre-working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to try yeah, and buy the car and then solve it. Yeah, that's, it, it was kind of a pain in the ass. Like I said, it kind of gets to a point yeah. with it. So, But we've got them that's good. pretty good now. I'm glad so, that's been so, started. Yeah, uh, for those of you listening live, jump into the super chat if you've got questions. Yeah. We're going to get there in like uh, five, ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, and I can already see there's a bunch going on. But um, what else did I want to ask you? Uh, sure. 34, <laughs> oh, so like, other than... So other than the Skyline, what uh, other cars? Other than the Skyline, what what else? What other sports cars are really looking good out of Japan right now? Well, I mean, is so, it worth buying a right hand drive Supra or a right hand drive NSX or any of that kind of stuff? Or I mean, we've got. The- I mean, we've got we've got some Supras. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we sold a few NSXs, but the prices have really pushed up. Yeah. I mean, so actually, there was a, one of our customers' cars was just on Super Street, featured Super Street yesterday. Oh, cool. So, um, and I, I like the NSX, and I you know, too, I lovely. mean, they. Uh, 
you know, when they came out, I mean, because I drove them actually when they're brand new. We, strange as it sounds, we sent the Acura NSXs to Japan <laughs> because, you know, they were left hand drive and yeah. Honda and all that stuff. And so I drove them when they were brand new. And then I was like, ah, you know, I mean, it was cool. I mean, it was a nice car, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything special. And then when I drove the ones that we had, you know, recently, I was like, man, these are actually a really good car. They're lovely, they're, aren't they're they? They're a really nice car yeah. to drive. And they're just built like, really well. I mean, they're just tight. Like, I mean, the shifting yeah. and, and, you know, the clutch, like everything else. And I and love then, the view out of right, the windshield. Exactly. It's spectacular. Right, right. And, and so and we had a uh, couple with titanium exhaust. Fucking A, they sound good. They sound good. good. Oh, man, they sound good. My so. favorite, I, I drove a, I, I drove a, like an O2 yep. uh, that had a six-speed, yep. and it had a nice coilover setup, nothing crazy, but it had a short and final drive, mm. and it was fucking rad. Yeah, it was we, so nice. Yeah, we had a we had a three-liter with a six-speed in it, yeah. and we had a 3.2 in another car. Yeah, so the 3.2 it, was the second-gen engine. Yeah, 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 so, I mean... But uh, they're great cars. They're, they're built so well that, that you can it, drive them, and they're nice. They're not like super fast, but they are really rewarding to drive. Yeah, they're they're just like I said. It's just nice to drive. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I said after after years and then getting back in it, I was like, man, I, I like this thing. So, yeah. um, you know, we've got Supras, um, you know, six speed twin turbo cars. I mean, they're again, they're they're pretty expensive. What's I mean, the what is the do you, what is the discount? For a right-hand drive Supra versus a U.S. spec Supra, mm, maybe twenty. Twenty percent, twenty thousand, or twenty percent. Twenty grand, twenty grand. ten, twenty grand. I mean, it depends on like the condi- You know, I mean, because sometimes we're looking at like the condition and the mileage and stuff on some of our. I cars. just for hypothetical, I would say right. just call it two identical cars except yeah. the steering wheels on the other side. Yeah. So I mean, but so some people, of course, right-hand drive. I don't want it. I'm yeah. never going to have it. This is stupid. You know what the hell? Blah blah blah. Other guys. You know, something kind of cool and different. I think right-hand drive is a fun novelty, actually. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, in this, you know, if Skylines did come in left-hand drive, I probably would look for one of those. But yeah. I thought it was a fun it, game. It was. I thought it was enjoyable. You know, that's just the way they are. Yeah. I mean, some people ask about you know left-hand drive, and you know, I've heard all. Have you ever of- converted one? Um. Yes. You have. <laughs> oh my god. So <laughs> holy shit. Not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um. So. One of my old, uh, like, old friend, he had a um, this guy, Henry Halanto. Um, I knew him for Cyclone Typhoon stuff, and he made a left-hand drive R32 Crazy. years ago. And then there was a guy, Alexander, he made a left-hand drive R33. And so Alexander also actually wrote a couple books about Skylines. And really? he was a big R33 guy, Alexander Gorgi. So How do you spell out. that? Yeah, Alexander G O R D G something something. No, no, no. I, I don't know. with an I. Yeah. Let's yeah. see what we can find. No. Gore. No, 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 Gore. No, 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 no. Alexander. Alexander. But if you go back to my blog and then and then put in Alexander like mm. GTR USA and then put in Alexander, you find find him soon. I don't know. Later. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Alexander. But anyway, he he made left hand drive R thirty. Three and left hand drive R thirty four, and then you know there's there's been a couple other places have done it, and then Middle East some guys. Well, have here done I, it I found there. a couple yeah. images. Yeah, that's yeah, that's here's a car. That's my yeah, that's hang the, on. Here's the here's a car, I drove, and then I, I drove that car. So and then here's a here's a, a left hand drive dashboard. Yeah, how about that? It can be done. I mean, yeah, it's been it's been done, but it's not um, not financially advisable. It, it was weird to drive actually because of the bump in the floor, and so oh yeah, so the pedal box is all funky. And there's huh? Alexander right there. <clears throat> so there you go. But good so, looking car. <laughs> I mean, so the 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 uh, you know years ago. So I, I think actually there was a something uh, today they put out like Sam Atani and and uh, like Road and Track years ago, mm. and they were like, you know, they couldn't import the Skyline to the U.S. because the drive shaft was in the way. It was what oh, they used yeah. to say a long time ago. The fucking drive shaft is on the right side. So what was in the way? It was just the uh, pedals. I or that was just a bullshit excuse. I just they a bullshit excuse. Oh, okay. I think I. I mean, because the 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 prop shaft, the front wheel drive shaft is yeah. actually underneath the driver's seat oh it's so underneath on the right side so <laughs> i remember reading it and just being oh, like now like weird. later on being like this is bullshit i mean this is <laughs> a fucking excuse on why they never brought it to the u.s they never brought it to the u.s probably because they thought it was a little too too much car too, too heady too complicated yeah for the guy for the white people <laughs> Hakujin. they Gaijin. gave us the 300 zx that's the we same we've got the z yeah nah, so nah, i mean nah. and and yeah and we you know all the other BS cars, but um, so 
I mean, we've got R33 GTSs right now, um, but, uh, you know, you've got some of the other, you know, oddball Toyotas and stuff, but, man, R32 is just still... That's still the one. It's still people looking for it, people buying them, people... uh, The prices in Japan are high, and they just don't seem to be going down, and some people will say, well, when the R33 gets legal, is it going to go down? I'm like... Man, there's a third of the number of R33s mm-hmm. as there were of R32s. And the thing is that, you know, you're fighting against the whole entire world. You know, it's and, a global and, market. Right. Now. And, and yeah, there's, yeah, you know, yeah. and, there, and there's guys in Japan that won't sell their car. Yeah. You know, what do I you mean, think about Canada. Oh, man. Canada has some shit up there, man. You don't want to buy a car out of Canada? Just because. They just, you know, the, the, problem, the problem with a lot of the Canadian stuff is that, like, Canadians are our redneck northern, you know, cousins. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the the thing is, like a lot, you know, I mean, they they a lot of them, you know, they treated them like a Honda Civic. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, that's fair. You that's know, fair. And, they and don't so treat them like a collector car. They don't. I mean, and, and and a lot of people say, well, it's not a collector car; it's just a car. You know, blah blah blah. But then, you know, now later on down the line, when you're looking to buy one, do you want one that somebody treated? Like shit, or you no, want one I don't. That, that that you you know, and so they have real winter, they have real snow, they have real you know, and you have a lot of guys up there that just you know basically didn't treat them. I mean, has all the cheapest eBay parts on it. I mean, you know, I mean, when I see that car, I'm not interested. I mean, yeah. I bought a few from Canada. I didn't work out. I just don't want to buy any more from Canada. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, I'd rather buy them from Japan. I mean. You know, you occasionally have some fucked up shit from from Japan. I mean, the wiring is awful generally, but um, you know, you look at you know, you have you know cars with navigation and all this other shit and like wires everywhere, all <laughs> fucking uh, 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 scotch locked together and stuff. And I mean, you're like, man, this is bad. I mean, as I said I was yeah. a guesser electrician. And you look at all this crap, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. holy fuck, man! They're like, what the hell is going on? Like, yeah. you know, wires on wires on wires. You know, <laughs> scotch lock on a scotch lock on a scotch lock. Like, holy shit! You know, yeah. this is bad. But um, I uh, you know, I mean, we 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 try to you know fix that stuff yeah. before you know, and that's what we're we're trying to do that's with some so of those cars. Funny. But like I said the, the you know when you start to get into the rust and the you know cars that haven't been maintained and taken care of versus ones that have. So, um, because now the the problem is that you know even the crappy cars are kind of expensive. <laughs> so, what's the what what is like to what's the minimum to get into like me a, right now like thirty. Fuck, really? Yeah. Wow. I, mean, for you, know, I know, kinda, what you, you know, you know what you paid for yours, which I, was what I paid on the low my, end, but Yeah, no, but, you gave me a great deal. And, but right now like 30 is about as wow. low as I sell them. I just And that's for like a blah car? Yeah, that's for a blah car. So, I have I mean, fuck, I should have held. <laughs> yeah. So, um the the uh um I mean, I just sold some. I sold a really nice black low low mileage one that was mm. really really nice it was like 24,000 mile car but it was like perfect and, and what does that go for 48 well, that's not that bad so it's not and then, that bad and it's then, not it's not 80 yeah and then i just sold what i would probably the most expensive california so we're doing a car for cali that's going to end up being 70 wow it's a 32 uh-huh. damn so I mean, you know, there's I, I mean, of course, there's guys out there that sell them, you know, sell some stuff for you know less, and there's, you know, there's, you know, some cheap pieces of shit out there, and mm-hmm. you know, some guys are like, oh, it's you know, twenty, you know, I can't, I couldn't sell it for twenty, and I'm like, well, it probably is fucked, you know, maybe it's you, you know, I don't know, <laughs> I mean, I I can sell cars, you know, I mean, I you know, we we try to do, you know, and it, even since you bought your car, like I kind of changed a lot of what we do, you know, as far as going over the cars and you know working on stuff in Japan before yeah. it gets here. And then even, again, back to the AC stuff, and even once it gets here, you know, we're kind of gone through a lot more, like, stringent checks on stuff mm-hmm. because in the beginning, I was just kind of bringing them and sending them, you know. Yeah. So, and now it's like, you know, um, we have the ability. to protect. We have the ability to, you know, I mean, we've got a shitload of cars, though. I mean, we got, I mean, you see what's on I the saw website. The inventory. Uh, that's, that's not even. Again, that's not even the beginning, importavehicle.com. There are there plenty are, of cars. There are so many more cars than there are on there. So we have about 
60 or 70 cars mm. and there's whatever's on there but I like this what do you what all right pulsar gtir versus starlet Ooh. I mean, GTIR all day. Pulsar GTIR? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. That thing is, that's a fucking rad little bitch right SR20, there. SR20, all wheel drive. That's kick ass. How much so, you want for this thing? 18 grand? It's all yeah, right. Yeah. So there are. It's all right. I, I mean, the Pulsars, you know, the the parts of the Pulsars are a bit harder. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, you know, the same deal. They're not as appreciated as some of the other stuff. So, you know, you're going to have, you know, and this is auto. No. It's an automatic. Yeah, but oh. we, but I actually, I, we have another one too. So, but Starlets are pretty cool. I mean, What's turbo your, it makes all kinds of interesting sounds and shit. So. What are your uh, thoughts if you want to buy a Skyline and yep. you are concerned with the long term value of that car? Keep it stock. Is that or can you modify and still preserve value? I mean, what I. What I'm doing right now, you know, I mean, we can modify them a little and, and still preserve value. I mean, mm. if you're using high end stuff, you're fine. But if you're using cheap shit, then you know. I so mean, would you recommend if you've got a 32 to go with the the steel turbos instead of the ceramic and the? I, I mean, most people, you, like you're that. never going to even see that. So I mean, I don't think that makes any difference. So I mean, it's inside and it's it's something that's more um, a reliability thing. Uh-huh. So I mean, you never would know if you open the hood. You wouldn't know what it's. There's got, yeah. no way. You could tell, I couldn't tell you until I take the downpipe off, and even then, I need a fucking a flashlight and a and a mirror in order yeah. to be able to see it. You know, yeah. So it, it's something that's you know to me, it's a reliability thing. It's no problem. So, um, but then if you start to get into like you know single turbo and oh, yeah. um, you're you're you know doing like a lot of other weird things and stuff. I mean, maybe you know uh, to the right person, you mm-hmm. know, it, it, it's interesting. But you know, you start to get I mean, so like we had a car, you know, uh, one we used on Top Gear US, US Top Gear, uh, Top Gear America. Uh huh. Um, and, you know, it's six speed. So I had six speed in it, T37s, gunmetal car. You know, I mean, that's kind nice of. Car. That's, standard, that's kind of standard. like, you know, I mean, those are got kind of some, some desirable things on it, you know? So, um, uh, it, to most customers, it's worth you know a little bit more this than a completely stock car. Yeah. So, all right. I mean, we've had a few. I mean, you can see if you look in sold cars with inventory uh, sold. sold. Let's look at. Uh, you let's can, look you at, can, let's you look can, at some sold you, cars you can, here. You can scroll. Lots down. of skylines. Uh, yep. Lots, lots of skylines. Yeah. Wow, really a lot. That's a kick ass little CRX you got going on there. That's too. in California right now. Oh yeah? Yep. So They're, someone's smogging a C like carving uh-huh. a CRX? Uh-huh. Jesus Christ. And I did a couple cappuccinos for California. I can see the Evo? Evo one? Oh Evo one. With, cool. <laughs> with the sticker. With the livery on it. Yeah. I mean that one was like kind of strange and that's, but when that's we, pretty rad man. When, I like when, that thing. That's you cool. know, I was like, man, we gotta peel all those stickers off. And then when I got it, I was like you know, yeah, I right. actually don't mind it. It's it was okay. actually okay. So it's clear skylines are are your bread and butter. They are. That's, that's really what's what's that all is, going on here. I mean, we got Arc Sevens, we got Aristos, mm. we got blah blah blah. But man, wow. you know, we get a, some people asking for some other, you know, like A eighty sixes. But yeah. man, those fucking cars are like twenty grand in Japan. Yeah. It's like, do you really? I mean, by the time I buy it, I bring it. Yeah, and if I'm going to really going to spend thirty grand right. on a Corolla, yeah. So I mean, I, I had somebody recently that sent me one. And I don't think they realized what the price was on it. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, you know, this car is like 28 grand, right? Before I touch it. And so... Did, they, did, a, they, did he run away then at that point? Yeah, I hadn't heard it back, you know? <laughs> so I don't think they realized what the, you know, you yeah. know what, what the yen value was on it to, to what it is in the U.S. I mean, they're but just... But if someone understands the price, will you go get them something? I'll get them everything, anything. Anything, anything you want. Anything, anything you want. want. What yeah. about stuff out of Europe? Are you fucking with that stuff at all? Like Delta Integral? I should be, like but I'm not. I mean, actually, you can get those in Japan. There's actually quite a lot of them there. Well, the in- it's very interesting, and I've just been... I just watched, you know, bring a trailer. The kind of... The, the Porsches, the... Yep. Degrales, the mm-hmm. Alpina BMWs from the eighties. Right, that stuff is coming out of Japan right now. Yes, it's a good yeah. time to. Is it a good time to? Because they had a lot of European stuff over there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, again, like I said, I we, we shipped a bunch of things in the you know late eighties, early nineties, and that to there, and mm-hmm. then they 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 got a after the Americans and some of the other weird things. They they did get quite a lot of um, European cars, and even right now they're European car 
is, is what they're they're interested in the most more than American stuff. But um, I uh, you know the the Japanese cars, the Skylines are so um, I'm so busy with them. Although I do have maybe seven Defender nineties. But oh really? <laughs> I don't. I look. I I fucking hate Defenders, but oh, I don't man. blame anyone who man, wants to make a buck off them. They Yaska, you know my business yeah. partner. He he loves them, man. I think they're junk. They're awful. They're awful. <laughs> they're fucking like I drove a like I drove you're a, like yeah. duh, 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 duh. I'm like man. Totally. I'm they're like the this worst. is there, man. There was one that just sold up at fucking Monterey. Uh, this Defender ninety US one seventy five hundred miles or something. Yeah. So for like a hundred and sixty grand. Fuck that sideways. Hundred and sixty. Nope. I'm like, are you? T- I mean, it's hundred and sixty grand. You buy a brand new G wagon. Call it a day. Yeah, I mean, I don't even. You know, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not a fan I, of the G wagon, but if yeah. you want to spend 160 grand on a boxy SUV, right? A 97 Defender is not the way to do no. it. So, so, so the def- yeah. Anyway, I don't want to give away too much. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's like, you know, some competitors listening. So I may not, <laughs> you know, I may not be uh, completely. Don't show uh, your cards. I, you know, but like I say, we we got. I mean, we we sold we sold one, and we sold some other stuff, and some other things that are interesting, but. Um, but it's Skylines. Um, yeah, Skylines I mean, there's the mortgage. I mean, there's other other cars in other parts of the world that I just haven't gotten around. I mean, some of the more interesting Holdens and, mm. and Fords and and some of that. I mean, from Australia and and um, you Might know, be because time to go visit Grandma. You know, because they've been dead for years, Sorry. so that doesn't really. <laughs> but I, I mean, I've I mean, my my parents lived there for eight years actually in in, in uh, Gold Coast and like Brisbane area, but um, I. You know, there's some some cool car. Like, again, there's there's lots of cool cars around the world. Mm. It's just you know sometimes it's a matter of like time, space, yeah. money. <laughs> you know, yeah. so and I mean, like I said we've got you know you see what's on the site, but we've got you know I've got another thirty or forty cars that I'm trying to prep, get ready, you know, get ready to sell. You know, that's still there and stuff that's in Japan and coming and all those kinds of things. And so you always have to. Um, you know, like anything, you know, the you know, you don't have unlimited money, unlimited time, unlimited of course. A- anything. So, I mean, you know, we got, you know, we're we're we're, busy. We're, we're, we're we're pretty good, but we're not, you know. I mean, it's so so. I, I mean, I'd love to bring in some more Ferraris, and I mean, there's yeah. some, there's some some cool shit that you know. I mean, I know we sent to Japan, and and so even just from there, and then there's you said all the different uh, Land Rovers, Range Rovers, and then there's um uh other um you know like you said lancias and things but you know then you get down to some of the support yeah some of those for cars. parts and yeah, for, yeah you know, like that. some of the lancias and the things, um so. the one that i have my guilty pleasure i think as far as the for a non-skyline japanese car is a pajero evo that's Pajero, Pajero Evo e, yeah. is my. That's my. I've never driven one, but uh-huh. something about it is very appealing. Yeah, no, those are cool. You ever drive one? No. You ever no. Have, really? I know what it is, but I know I never driven one. No. It, so. I I would love to have a go in one. It seems it's like a it's like a fucking Suzuki sidekick with an Evo drivetrain in it. Yeah. That sounds kind of awesome. Also, kind of terrible. Yeah. See, there's one thing I I, I want to mention and I don't want to mention it, which Uh-oh. is uh, mention it, please. So Stagia 260 RS, which is what? I'll look it up. Is that the wagon? Yeah, that's the that's the Skyline wagon, 260 right? Two sixty RS, two sixty. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Isn't that the Skyline wagon? Mm. That's the shit, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, look at that. You know, see. So there are so a two sixty RS is um, R thirty three drivetrain. Oh, uh, GTR or GTR. GTSC? Oh, well, they, there were GTS. There's so the two sixty is two point six liter. Uh, so that's what oh it yeah is. right there you go yeah. So but I mean they're ninety six ninety seven ninety yeah I think uh-huh. they're ninety yeah I think they're ninety seven I forget exactly. Can I mean, you got so many, and you can make a GTR front front end yeah, on this some people, right? Yeah, some people do it. Yeah, yeah, see that's the one that yeah it looks way better. I mean even though it's I don't not, care about the front end. I care about the drivetrain under. I do too, but so, it just looks better this way. Yeah, Skyline wagon is awesome. Yeah. So I mean, like, so here's one with like TEs on it, and you know, you know, it it is cool, but it's a little bit Subaru Forester looking. 
a little first gen Forester in yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, I I like the box. It's cool, and I, I the drivetrain is what you know is, is appealing. You. So I like, I like this thing. This one, <laughs> this one with the with the wheels, the Nismo, is, uh, Nismo Nismo wheels. wheels and yeah, some other. and so you know, there's some there's four door. Um, there's actually a four door GTR R33. That's pretty cool. And so I mean, and I, it just like some of those. Like I said a golf ball stuff. So that's yeah. You know, the, the 260 RS is... You know. That's rad. Let's yep. go to some of these Super Chat questions okay. and finish off the show. We got a bunch. Uh, let's see. Let's start. Abel Lopez. R34s are properly expensive right now. Uh, which import do you think will be the next big thing? R34s. R34s <laughs> would be... I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, the thing is that, that, that people who are going to want them are going to pay for them. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, there's... You know, when we start to talk about money and, and availability of money and where, where money is in the world and all those other kinds of things and desirability, um, you know, we're starting to get into, um, you know, people around our age and stuff. Yeah. You know, you may not be, you know, you may not be that guy for the 69 Camaro. I mean, you may like it and you yeah, may yeah. be into it or a 67 Mustang. Like, that may be a cool car, but that's not where you're going to spend your money. Yeah. You know, guys who are more in their 35, 40, you know, early 40s range or, you know, by the time these cars get legal in the 50 range, you know, they're going to maybe buy the 34 over their 69 Camaro. Because totally. that's what they Because that's what they want. If they have, they're going to spend money. So I think there's an, there's not enough of them cars, yes. and there are more than enough rich people globally right. to yes. buy up all the good ones at a very high price. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, and it, it, like I said, I mean, you, people complain about it, but that's, I mean, the truth is that you know whatever there's fucking however many billionaires here in yeah. L.A. or something, you know, I, there's. I, I forgot. I just was looking there's like 7,000 billionaires or something, yeah. you know, and you're like, okay, well, then, you know, I mean, there's 11,000 of these cars <laughs> worldwide. I mean, yeah. like I said, obviously not everybody wants them, but. And you some know, of them start, are not worth buying. Some of them are trashed. And some of them have be, already been cut in half and yeah. are done. You know, yeah, a lot of them are. And there's stuff in the world that people can't buy. You can't buy it. You just won't be able to buy it. Yeah, like I would like to have a DB4 GT Zagato. Tough yeah. shit. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's stuff that's available. And and mm. so, I mean, R33 GTR, R34 GTR, and then... Um, the Skyline, you think, will always lead the Japanese car I, importing I, I, You know, it's the car I deal with the most, and so then, you know, you'd think it's a bit biased, but man... I, and looking at all the insights, all the things that I see, all the, you know, I mean, I, I look at all the data, and that's that's where it is. That's what people want. Yeah. All so, right. Yeah. Thank you, Abel. Yeah. Ashton says, do you think if they added power to the uh, the 86 platform, uh, the current one, it would boost sales substantially, or would it ruin the character of the car? You ever drive a, a forced induction 86? A new one. I have... So I've 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 worked on so we have World Challenge car we had oh, uh, yeah. um so you know I've I've done actually quite a bit of work for Toyota for Scion Toyota oh. in the past so with one of my friends um you know besides doing what I do like one of my friends has a marketing company work pretty close with with Toyota and so um we ran the um the TMG car the the oh, um yeah. T- TMG uh cup car in World Challenge in November 2017. So the TNT Cup car, yeah, so you're going to see it's a red and white car. So, yeah, you'll see it. But, um... I'll find it. Yeah, see, there's me, actually, if you... Oh, it's a good look, good-looking car. I had, a, I had a beard, I had a beard and stuff, so that's up at Willow, up doing testing and stuff. But, um... Yeah, crap photo. You Sorry the about one. the shitty photo. You I, the well, cause fucking I one, clicked so. large you pick, tools, okay. large... Okay, well, whatever. There's we'll, we'll oh, because oh, they, they made us remove the wing for ah, for anyway. So so we had to race it without the wing. So Craig Craig Stan drove it and stuff. So oh, I like uh, Craig. Um, I don't know if I don't know if I've actually driven a. Uh, I, I I'm, I've got friends with them, and I'm just trying to think if if I've actually driven one with with uh, any kind of force induction. I don't I don't think I have. I drove one with a I've driven a turbo one by yeah. Crawford, yeah, which was, it made way too much power, right? <laughs> and uh, and it was angry. Yeah. And I drove one that had a road trex on it, and it made about two ninety at the wheels, right. And it was aces, right? Aces all around, so. and. I mean, I don't know if toy, if they offered an STI version of the eighty six, would it boost sales? I think they'd sell some. 
Yeah, I don't. But I don't know. I mean, I don't I, think it would ruin the character of the car. I think it was the car was very nice to drive. Force induction. I mean, how much more more money would it cost, and how many yeah. people buy those based on based on the number? Are you going to spend forty thousand dollars on a BRZ right. that's got a turbo on it? Mm, don't right. Know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. Is it, are they? I mean, I've driven actually. I've driven the the celebrity cars too. We did mm-hmm. a thing with the celebrity cars. Oh, man, they're pretty fucking doggy. Slow. Weren't they? Oh, the stock ones. Uh, yeah, they're the stock with a, with engine a cage is and terrible. Stuff. With, Ugh, with extra and, weight, yeah. That and, stock engine stinks. Yeah, so, so we, I did a. I helped out with a uh, English TV show where they're doing, and we did some stuff in in uh, downtown LA across some convention center, and they like drove him Jim Connor around in there, and so. But you know, I I it's like man, it's not very fast car. No, it's not. So. I mean, I think they'd sell some. You know, yeah. a bunch of people would 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 buy. But, them, but, but again, the price, the yeah. price, man. People buy on price, and and if if if. Like you said, if it's forty grand, they might lose people at forty. They're, they're not yeah. gonna, you know, if thirty-five. Yeah, you know, whatever. So thanks, Ashton. Uh, Kezhang fan says, "What do we think of Range Rover Sport build quality today? Do you do you have an opinion on Range Rover?" Sport? Um. So my in-laws uh-huh. have several Range Rovers. Uh huh. Um, current current ish generation ones. Mm, yeah, a few years yeah. old and stuff. So I think. There's a they have a sport. I mean, you know, in those cars, like inside, and you know, they live in Virginia and horse country and mm-hmm. stuff over there. Um, inside and and like you know, the overall luxury is very nice, yeah. But man, when your lease is up or after two years, you better jettison that motherfucker, yeah. dude, because you don't want to have to do. I mean, because they had a uh, I drove supercharged one from Virginia down to Florida, and that it would just like randomly fucking cut off like driving you know <laughs> like it had it had some some problems you know some and and then you know used i mean because again a yeah. used car dealer forever dude you get whenever you get into like an older used range rover every light on the fucking dash <laughs> is on like yeah. the air air suspension air suspensions check engine you know like and like everything it's a fucking christmas tree inside i mean yeah. as far as a you know um uh, a limited uh, like if you bought one because you have a lot of money and you can turn around and you can jettison it after two or three years mm-hmm. or whatever it might be, you are fine. <laughs> if you are buying a used a three year old used one, yeah, man, good luck. You know, <laughs> good luck. I'm, I'm I'm afraid of them. So. I think the newest ones are better than they've ever been, and I think the fit and finish of them is good. Oh, yeah, and yeah. the drivetrains are fairly stout. You're not gonna blow an engine up it's uh at least i don't think so but yeah electronics air suspensions you know lease it or get an extended warranty that's yeah. my angle on yeah. that one yeah. all right would we, would i ever consider doing another rally north america event i started doing these rallies after service um i love the guys who run rally north america it's a lovely event full of lovely people i spend way too much of my life in cars and the idea of driving on an event recreationally to me is just it's not happening. I they they run a great event, but they they hired me. They yeah. paid me to be there to make videos of that event. And uh, it's, I it's I mean time. You know I mean so I said I, I, I mean I, I work I work on. Uh, I was actually going to be headed to NASA Nationals, mm. um, which is going on. But man, I just you know as I said again, working with my friend and um, you know, he, they're going to be out there supporting like 20 different racers out yeah. there. And so uh, D- for DG spec and you know, it's just, you know, when you get into some of that, I, and it's just time, man. And you just, if you're serious about it and you're actually doing it correctly, yeah. which if, if I'm doing it, I'm doing it seriously. Then you spend, you're spending 10 times the amount of time off the track, prepping yeah. the car and working on it. than you are on the, tr- the track or on yeah, the event. Yeah. And that's what you have to do to be serious, which yeah. means you either got to pay somebody to do it, yeah. or you got to like not or have get a under fucking the car, life. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, all I mean, weekend, no. right? And I mean, all weekend, all weekend. Mm. You know, for me, I'm very spoiled. I get, I make a living doing car right. shit. Right. The idea of spending my own time and money doing car shit, it's just not going to happen. The only thing I spend money on regards to cars is actu- is racing. I buy a seat in an endurance race car. Yeah. I fly in. Right. I show well, up. I race, and I go that's, home. That's that's, that's probably it's the, the best, best. The best it's way to the do best. it. Yeah, it's the same thing with rally. You know, 
So if you're in Ohio, come see me in mid Ohio at the end of October. I will be racing there with road and track. Uh, R Beloy, thank you for your donation. Greg Howard, is there a car, a U.S. car? that other countries have imported with similar enthusiasm as we have the Skyline, an American car. What do you export a lot of to other countries that in, people enthusiastically want? Well, I, I mean, again, to, to Australian stuff, Camaros and Mustangs, because mm -hmm. they never had them. And so, you know, a lot of the stuff that was in movies that was just never sold in uh, those places. Like 69 Mustang from Bullet, 68 Mustang from Bullet yeah. and that kind of shit. Yeah, just yeah, and, yeah. and you know Mustangs in general, just Mustangs and Camaros in general. And yeah. so the thing is, I mean, we I don't want to get too deep into this whole subject, but basically they just want a Mustang or they just want a Camaro. Like they don't know anything necessarily about them. Yeah. And so, you know, there's six-cylinder Camaros, Mustangs, there's yeah. cheaper, shittier, you know, and then there's, you know, but a lot of those I don't want to necessarily mean this badly, but they're uneducated about those cars. And it's the same even with Skylines. Like, yeah. to me, they're Skylines, but they're GTRs. You bought a GTR, you didn't buy a Skyline. A GTST. Or you a didn't GTS, buy one of the other yeah. Skylines. You bought a GTR because you wanted a GTR. Yeah. To me, like, and I mean, I I always give guys shit about this, and they always give me shit back about it, which is, you know, to me, there is only GTR. The rest are just sort of. I filler. don't even basically pay attention to them. Yeah. You know, I mean, I sell them, and uh, you know, do and, people uh, ask you for GTSTs? I mean, they, we have but, them. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, we sell them and all that stuff. I've obviously had to change my view slightly, but before, like at MotorX and stuff, it didn't make any sense because the cost to bring the car into uh -huh. compliance was the same GTR or GTST, and so you know, so now you have a you know whatever base you start with, it didn't matter because the rest of the cost was there. So, but getting back to Mustangs and Camaros and and cars like that, which is. You know, again, you can still find a 65 Mustang here in L.A. with a six-cylinder and yeah. automatic transmission for four or five grand or something like that. But then, you know, if you're now into 67 Fastback, yeah. Shelby, $200,000 car. And, yeah. like, those, they don't understand, you know. So <laughs> then if, it, you know, basically if somebody sees that $200,000 car, but that 65 isn't worth that because that's not... That right, right, car. right. And some people, you know, they don't they have they problems. They the yeah, 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 they have the problems range. putting those putting that stuff together and yeah. even the same kind of things on some of the skylines. They have problems putting it together. I mean, but so you know, the the the, the four-door GTSTs, you know, with a 20 or, or R33 with a 25, you know, they're fine. They're, mm. you know, I mean, people drift them, people do other stuff with them and there's all-wheel drive versions and blah blah blah, but you know, to me, it's just GTR. It's the GTR. Yeah. yeah. So. I drove a GTST once, and the dude paid like 10 grand for it. And I go, you know, yeah. for 10 grand, that's right. a fun car. Yeah, I mean, we, was, we, we sold them. I mean, it's we a fun did, car for yeah, 10 grand, right. for sure. So, Rear wheel drive, turbo, nice slick engine. Like, right. it was fun. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, the inline six. And, yeah, and, and a lot of guys, oh, I'm going to put a 26. And I mean, I've had some, you know, I mean, I've sold them before, not real recently, but I mean, I've sold them for, you know, six or seven grand for, because there's some, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a uh, 13 different versions of R32. Yeah. You know, and there's a there's a 1.8 liter automatic four door. Is it really? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I you know, know there's doing. like some shitty ass for That's why I say like GTR, yeah, but yeah. you know, I mean, I, mean, I guess if you want a shell for something, okay, but yeah, yeah, I mean people put, you know, other yeah. engines and crap in, so. Uh, thank you. Sam Craig says, "Do I get sick of people asking for advice on buying cars they probably can't afford and people trying to big note themselves?" No. Big, big that's note? what this show is about. I don't you ask advice, I'll give it. I don't check your bank account first. Um, but he's from, uh, from Australia. I see. Thank you, Sam. Yep. Andrew Jackson, in my opinion, what car drove better? The JZX100 Chaser I drove in New Zealand. Toyota Chaser, neat little car. Yep, yep. Uh, basically a four-door Supra mm -hmm. that sort of has the body of a Camry, but the interior of a Lexus. It was very interesting. Do you have one? No, just looking at a regular inventory. Oh. Go back up to do you have current uh, inventory. Do you have a Chaser? I don't have a 100, but I have a... Oh, here's the tour. Yeah, okay, perfect. Here's a, here's our here's a chaser. This is a uh, one J car, but then I mean we have some wrist. This is a manual, and it's kind of a weird it's fucking a, like drift car deal. It's, it's got, got like, a body kit. Yeah, but if you look like you know what a, like Aristos and yeah. stuff, but those are all auto. But they're um, so if we go back, you know, to current inventory, so then uh, you've Aristo. got uh, oh here's an Aristo. So there's Aristo. Aristo is basically a first gen GS three hundred. Yes, but. Uh, but originally, you know, original 2J, mm. twin turbo. Oh. Oh. So An automatic. They all, they're yeah, all they're auto. All. But so, but, you know, this car like this, you know, I mean, 
an Ten original grand. an original 2J is always going to be better than a swapped car. You know swap cars always have fucking problems. Right, you yeah, know yeah. What I mean? You know, no matter... This thing's rad, dude. This 92 Aristo for 10 Gs is rad. I, got, I think I got four or five of them. Really? Yeah. It's pretty... Dude, for 160,000 miles, this thing looks clean, too. It's these, hold, these things decent. hold up pretty well? I mean, yeah. I mean, they're Lexus... Japanese know, from the 90s, they're, Lexus. They're Lexus GS. So this, the, the good part about this car is that it's available. Anyway, we're back to the JZX, your question on so, the 100 and the uh, did, The Chaser, the R32, GTR, or FDRX7, what do you think for driving enjoyment? You're going to go with GTR, obviously, right? Yeah, I'm a GTR Me guy, too. So I can't really. But I, I mean, uh, the... I mean, the Chaser had... I mean, four doors and... and the Chaser's rad. It was, you know, just, four doors, manual trans, all that stuff. RX-7s, man, I never have gotten into RX-7s. I I've just, driven one that was like the perfect build, yeah. and it was great, right. and all the other ones I've driven, I'm like, rah, rah, don't really care. Yeah, so we've had tons of them. Um, you know, the guys that love them, love them. Yeah. Um, you know, they can do you a lot of stuff. love a rotary. You, you know, they can do a lot of stuff. I mean, my brother-in-law has a really modified one, and... Uh, it's just not me, man. I feel so, you. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, uh, Amin wants to know, uh, looking for a 2011 E92 M3, what should I be cautious about besides rod bearing issue? That's the big one. The rod bearing. You know anything about those cars, the V8 M3s? Not the V8. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, really just like overall care and maintenance. You know, does it look like a car that's had the shit beat out of it? Yeah. Um, and the rod bearing thing is, a, is the big one because an engine replacement is so much money for one of those cars and my my wife had a e46 mm. m3 yeah when i met her they're lovely smg car. they're very they're, they're smg nice was car. weird smg is not I, good I but the really m3 like i wasn't going to shit in your wife's car but smg stinks yeah these the 2011s that. had the dual clutch which is much much better. right yeah. so um rod bearings the big one dude um i don't have a lot of other specifics uh general condition and, and rod bearings um it, it, shouldn't the internet be able to tell them yeah, but he the wants Googles. to hear it. They want to okay, hear you want to hear from me. Okay. Yeah, I just right. I don't have I don't have a lot of those technical answers for specific okay. models. I'm sorry. If you ask me about what to look for in a car I fucking own, that's one thing. But I don't have right. much there. I'm sorry. Right. What manual um, turbo sedan? Sean, what manual turbo sedan should we consider if we can't afford a minty Skyline GTR? I'm currently drooling over the Chaser you have for sale. I mean, sedans is you know so there's all the Skyline sedans. So I mean, we have let's say 32, 33. Um, GTSTs, um, and then I mean the other stuff is is auto though. Yeah, um, what about a Nissan Gloria? No, nah, see no? all that all that shit's it's auto all, shit. All, all gonna be auto. So I mean, so this is so the so like this the, so this thirty two. There's a thirty two GTST. Manual. Yeah. There's fifteen grand. Yep. So nice. This thing looks clean. Fifty eight thousand yeah, miles. Yeah, it's nice. Looks nice. So good color, good interior. Yeah. No dash bubble. No, it does. It does have. Oh, it does have a dash bubble. Yeah, I can't yeah, see it from can my see angle. Yep. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah. So this one's pretty solid. Sixteen grand. That's fun. So the two liter turbo rear wheel drive. You know, manual transmission. It, they're you know they're all right. So oh, I'm sorry, I didn't bring the picture over for the folks. Well, Here it is. Ninety one GTST. Sixteen thousand bucks. So and then we um um, but other than that. I said I'm not really. I mean, a lot of the other crap is all uh, auto, automatic. Yeah. yeah. So I so mean, it's that's really kind chaser of the way. or GTST four door. Yeah. Um, what else could we possibly think about that? I mean, you can also. There's also like the American swap. stuff. I mean, you can get an STI or an Evo. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. The Evos. Yeah. yeah the Evos. Evo. Actually, I do have a WRX. Oh, you have a JDM one. Uh huh. Oh, like an old one. Uh huh. So. Oh really? Like, I think it's sold like a two door. No, no, there's not until 95. Oh, shit, that's true, yeah. So, um, maybe it's in there. I, I, it's sold, so it no. may be... It don't exist. Uh. It does. It's in sold inventory. Oh. But I've, I had a couple of WRXs. Uh. Oh, here's a US. Yeah, no, a that's US. a US, US one. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Uh, 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 I saw it. I saw one over here. Where'd it fuck, go? Fuck, I don't know. There oh. it goes. There's one. Oh, here it is. There's Nine, both of them. <clears throat> a 93 WRX. Yeah. So the, in, the interior is kind of like interesting. You see like the the whatever i think tire print oh here. yeah look at that so that the you know again these are you know a little bit um just different like materials and different you know than, yeah. than a u.s car so i mean some people you know again just looking for something a little a, a little different than what was available the evos there's just not that many yeah 
It's just not that many. I mean, we've been, try, this, we've been trying this, to. You weren't right. fucking around with this tiger print. That's no, it's amazing. it's nice. The seats are nice too. Actually, they're they're pretty supportive. Got good bolstering, right? Good yeah. Lateral, yeah. yeah so, Nardy wheel. Yeah, I think there's one of them. They're Nardy. The wheel was original. Somebody had, yeah. had told me. I mean, I didn't. You know, there was like a Nardy package That's or something, cool. or Momo or something. So. Neat. All right, yeah. So you could you can definitely get an old WRX as well. Cool. Yep. Oh, a couple of people are offended by your Canada things. Canadians offended by calling them rednecks. Of Syrup the world. embargo. Yeah, it's Syrup it's embargo. It's, yeah, fuck Canada. Anyway, Mike says, so. Sean, thank you for the help and info on the Skyline owner's Facebook page. What car is the best value in a JDM daily driver? I mean, I would say it's something like the Aristo. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, you're... Say you're like ten grand into it, and the thing will fucking last forever, and the parts are available. You know the problem with like daily. You know can some you, guys. Can you da- put Lexus parts in this, or do you have to get the Japanese spec yeah. shit? Or you can put Lexus. I mean, you can put Lexus stuff in it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's going to be some obviously you know unique bits and pieces, but man, a lot of the like windshields and stuff. I mean, glass and yeah. other things are easy. Whereas yeah. you know, there's guys out here that. Even since the motor X days, guys who, who daily drive their Skyline, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not worried about the car. I'm worried about other fuckers hitting you. Yeah. And, and and it's happened. Like here in L.A., like I have two guys that I know here in L.A. have been hit in, in their Skylines. Oh, and sucks. it happens quite a bit like throughout, you know, because I'm on a bunch of groups, owners. Yeah, and, yeah. and it happens, man. Guys are, you know, sitting at a fucking light and somebody backs into him or something. Oh, I, I did have that happen to me. I almost that killed somebody. sucks. So I what about to, you know what I think is a lot of value I think the um the Celsius because you get a real nice Celsius yeah. for a lot of money and it'll last a long for not a lot of money not a lot yeah and you got the your where where is your car your, my LS yeah I'm picking it up tomorrow morning from what in theory should be its last service uh, under my tenure how uh, many miles does it have on it nine hundred eighty nine thousand dude you, you got to get that like extra eleven you got like oh no it's getting there. I'm yeah. taking it to a million, okay. but I mean last major service. So I just had the okay. rear lower control arms replaced. They were rusted. Okay. All the suspension bushings, mm-hmm. uh, brake pads and rotors, brake fluid, oil and filter change, and there's a, and a differential bushing as well. Okay. And that's $2,800. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I bought the car for 1200 I put fifteen <laughs> into it to get it 100,000 100, miles. <laughs> You know what? The marketing value is good, though. But a, but a Toyota Celsius is the Japanese version of the LS400. Yeah. And but, but you see, so that's a V8. Yes, the 1UZ. But the, the Aristo is 2JZ. Oh, no, I know, I know. T- but, but I'm just talking about, he said, he said best value in a, a JDM just, daily but, driver. But you see, so to me, then when you're done with the Aristo, you pull the engine out, and you should probably still get five grand for it. That's a good point. That's a good point. There's you know, value. That's why you so, see value. You don't. know, that's you know, if it's you know, I mean, unless you really fuck it up, but I mean, yeah, you, yeah. you turn around and sell the the two J out of the that's car. Points, sir. You know, so you get, you you run it into the ground, and if all the rest of the shit stops working, then the motor is still worth something. So, there you, you know, go. You so, see all the angles. I like that. Yeah. Um, uh, awesome Opossum says, I used to see a white R34 around Cal Poly Pomona in 0708. Was that you? Probably. <laughs> All right. Solved. Thank Probably. you, sir. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. So, were, were there a lot of other white R34s no, running around? No, no. But I drove one around in that, in area? that, in that time. Could Probably, have been. Yeah. Thank you for your donation, Mike. Uh, and thank you for whoever gave us some New Zealand dollars and then retracted their message. Okay. Uh, Justin says, is the new WRX the Casio F91W of cars? What is that? Like a generic watch? Is that? I don't know what. The, I don't know what that is either. F nine one W. Is that the? Oh, oh yeah, well, that's that's an old. That's the uh, basic right, Casio right, digital right, watch. Right, that's right. The, the original. F, the original. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, the uh, I don't know the WRX. Is, oh, just like general. I don't know. No. The WRXs are fun. They're, they're, all, they're all, getting, all wheel drive and, and turbo. turbo. I mean, and, it's not. I mean, it's. I you know, if you're talking like a, you know, an older, like a '96 Camry, or something. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, that is. But I I think that, you know, plain and so so plain and functional. Mm. I mean, I know I don't think the WRX is that. I, I think, think the WRX is is way different than that. And Impreza. 
maybe a base Impreza. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I think a, the, right. the Impreza XV Crosstrek thing <laughs> is the Casio F9 W of yeah. cars. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. And lastly, Mike wants to know, what is the best car to import to the U.S. from Europe or Asia you. that is over 25? The Defender, 993, 964. I'm mean, not telling you. Well, best is so subjective. What does best, best mean? What it does best mean? Best means the one you like the best. Well, it does it best so he can get money for it, so he can be competitor to me, or what? I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> Are I, you trying I to, trying to start a business. So he's trying to start a biz side side hustle and shit, or what? Um, Bro, no one, can, no one's gonna start a business today and catch up with you. You have you have too much knowledge. Um, and, and experience for someone to start now and threaten nah, your business. You can always start now. I think you know. I mean, I, I would I would say that before, but I I mean, it's like you know, we could look at this this YouTube stuff, you know, and like I mean, you've been on YouTube for a long time, and yes. there's guys who've come much later and have some crazy ass following. How many how many follow how many subscribers do you have? Me, eight fifty. Yeah, see. Um, it's a bunch. It's a lot, it's and a bunch. I, I, but well, I've been I'm getting smoked by other people. I'm I'm like I've got yeah I'm I, like dead in the water as far right, as subscribers so, go now. I'm I mean o- we've OG. got you know let's see that's kind of the thing right. So there it, it, there always can be somebody else that comes along. Yeah, I mean you're probably not controversial or lighting your hair on fire or not young enough. No. Actually, you're not young enough. I am not young enough. You're not I, young I, enough. I don't. I'm not <laughs> offensive enough. Probably. To grow, yeah. So you're not like when, doing all the stupidest shit you could possibly no. do. So I mean we just you know we, we sold uh, we just sold some cars to a bunch of YouTube guys. Mm. Different people, different stuff. So, you know, we sold the Supra, we sold a couple of R32s, R32 and stuff. And so, you know, I mean, their, you know, their format is is much different. Like, you have, like, this, to me, like, a nice polished format. You're talking about cars, you're doing your thing, even yeah. when you're, you know, and you're, you're doing even, like, a one take and you're talking about cars and stuff. But, you know, to them, you know, what's what's popular within that demographic is like holding the camera and talking to it and walking It's a around. vloggy, a vloggy yeah. thing. It's it's a it's there's people, you know, I have a show. Yes. And then I go home to my life. Right. And they and are not to, the same thing. Right. But the younger you go, the more integrated Integrate. show and life, life become. Right. And, and I, I don't find that interesting at all because I don't I don't. I don't even give a shit about a celebrity's life. You yeah, know what I mean? See, I want to see Tom Cruise act in a movie. Right. I don't give a fuck about his. See, see, I, I, I don't care either. But, but that's what I know. where the kids are. I know. And and so and that's the thing is that like you know us old. How old are you? Thirty six. No, you're not. You know, I'm not old enough, but I'm too old also. <laughs> yeah. So you're not too young. So, um, but that you know that as a thing, like we, you know, again, we're, we're selling these cars to, to some of these these kids and that that are that are buying them and doing stuff with them. So, it's cool. It's uh, you know, I mean, uh, 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 T J Hunt and Dustin Williams and uh, and Randy and uh, that's it. I mean, I love them. They're customers. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I just, it doesn't, you know, what they do doesn't exactly suit me. But, uh, you know, I'd rather, you know, do something that you do or, you know, Jay or you yeah. know, Jay Leno. And, oh, you know, and I, 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 my shows go the way that I do them because it's what I enjoy doing. Right. And if I don't enjoy doing it, I pivot. Right. And sometimes the audience doesn't like that. They, they go, we came to you for this. this yeah. And I go, well, I'm not going to do that. So if you want to leave, you can leave. But, you know, I'm not going to go back to doing something I hate because that's why you came here. So, I mean, so, so back into competition then, I mean, then, you know, I mean, there's always somebody who can come along yeah. and, and, you know, maybe hit some demographic that I'm not hitting. Yeah. You know, so that, you know, and talking to some people that we don't, you yeah. know, I mean, because, again, you know, just because of California and all over, you know, our, our problem is, you know, if we're selling cars to people in California, our, our, our high cost of entry yeah you know basically if i'm telling Doing them, anything in california is a huge pain in the ass you know if i'm telling them it's another four thousand to ten thousand dollars to do your car and you know i mean I, you're buying a seven thousand dollar eight thousand <laughs> yeah. dollar little van and i'm telling you it's another four thousand on top i mean so yeah, people are yeah. like you know you're you know you're fucking crazy i'm not gonna pay you that i'm like well it's a that's a flat fee that's not it doesn't that's, matter that's not to me yeah. it's, it's trust me it's to the lab but it's still they're still paying it it's yeah, still yeah. costing them money yeah. so i can't help it so. i mean i yeah i think just in my opinion it seems based on this entire hour and 40 minute conversation that the best car to import is a skyline yeah i mean yeah. It's, yeah. right because yeah. it's the <laughs> right. it's it's just the most you think about imported car skyline yeah it's gonna be worth money yeah so. it's gonna be worth money last one last one i talked about uh hiring live Joke link for the band. Yeah, I, I'm getting married in the spring, oh, okay. and as a, as a goof, 
like semi goof, I had my TV agent pull up the list of rates for like bands like that you've heard of. Yeah. Okay. Like I was like, no, what, okay, does it, right, what right. does it cost to get fucking Soul Asylum to okay. play your wedding? Okay. Yeah. And I found that quite a bunch of them were cheaper than you thought, than you'd think. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm okay. more expensive for me. But you don't have to be a lot richer than me. Right. To do okay. It. So someone says, did I know Bill Hines races super trucks and is a sponsor in Indy? I, I'm i trying to Google Bill Hines. Um, I don't know. Is he a member of Live? Um, William Joseph Hines. No, that's no, not him. I don't think that's him. Fred Hines. I, I don't know who... who I, I'm guessing he ran the Joker. I want to. I, I want to guess. This is this official he, X Games athlete. Yeah. So this guy Bill Hines, I think, might be. Oh, here he's 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 in the multi platinum rock band Live. Okay, okay, cool. Is he is that the singer from Live? It's not. That's not the singer from Live. He apparently so Bill Hines from Live also racing in stadium super trucks. Okay. That was the that was the thing. Maybe someone did someone uh, did they tell me here? No. I don't know. Anyway. Um, you, you got invited to a winning. Oh, thank you very much. I can't wait. <laughs> um, awesome. Oh, Sean, yep. thank you for coming down, dude. I no appreciate problem. it. It was a great show. Yep. I learned a lot. I'm glad that we that I now know the real story of Motorex. That, well, that some is, of it, anyway. There's some more, oh. more crazy shit, but yeah. Well, fuck. Yeah, the, right. the, go, the kidnapping part of going to prison <laughs> is really crazy. Right. That shit is wild. Um, check out uh, importavehicle.com. That's where you can. I'm still on the Aristo here. That's where you can find uh, top rank international vehicle importer Sean's inventory. Uh, if they got something you want, you can buy it here in California from them. And I get presumably you'll ship cars ship wherever cars they need all, to go. All over the U.S. Yeah, that's all, like all the time. your thing. Yeah, we um, ship them all over. And if they don't have what you want, you can probably hit them up. Maybe he can find it. Find your vehicle. Here's a form. Boom, yep. and uh, and you now your your you and your team now as you mentioned a couple times in, in casual you have the capability to make these cars California legal. Yep. Some of them, all of them, almost all of them, pretty much all of them. Most I mean, them? you know, there's a few cars if it's like got got quite a bit of mods. Mm. I, I don't really want to tackle it because I got to put it back mostly to stock. Right, um, right, right. You know, there's there's some some things about that, but um, I. But pretty much anything I can do California on. If it's something that was sold here, about sixty five hundred. Okay. And most of the time, I try to beat the lab up as much as I can, you know, and 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 get the prices down as much as I can. And I I actually probably if I'm doing California compliance, I actually probably lose a little bit of money really? compared to selling it outside, just because I, you know, we end up we we do a little bit more. It work costs on. you some money as well. Yeah, I mean, if I put a stock earbox on, like a car has filters on and I put a stock earbox mm. on it and I and I um you know we clean the injectors and we kind of like go through the car again yeah. like I you know like you know if it's been sitting for a while change the oil you know yeah, th yeah, like yeah. all those things are costs and yeah. so it ends up probably costing me another 500 bucks mm. to do California so you're a, you mentioned it just right there I remember you're a big fan of stock air boxes yeah you're a big stock air box well, guy just for California and yeah, yeah. But, less, but, headaches. Yeah, I, less I headaches you pop the hood it's stock you see a stock air box I'm you're putting disarmed. one back on my blue car do you well? You, I mean, I remember you telling me that you can make a lot of power on I've the done stock over airbox. Yeah. yeah, the stock airbox wheeling. is not the restrictor in the airflow. I don't think so. Yeah. So I mean, I, I said I've done six hundred. Yeah. What did we do? What did we do with the box? We did six hundred and fifty. That's a lot. That's, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. We we made an extra hole in it, but, it's, <laughs> but I mean, you know, we've an extra. Feed not this small because like our thirty three boxes and thirty four boxes are a little different, mm. and they have an extra feed and stuff. But um, so we made an extra feed into the box. But but you don't need a shiny chrome intake. You I probably don't, don't even want them. one. No. Yeah. All right, uh, and also follow uh, on Instagram Top Rank Importers uh, and. Uh, yeah, I do now. There's good shit on there. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate no it, man. No Thanks for coming in. The okay. Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. You just need something to talk into the internet and preferably something to say. Thanks very much, folks. I will see you next time. Goodbye.